Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to the Distinct and Jovial Podcast. Wow, wow, that's a great start. Whoa. I'm absolutely <laughs> keeping that in. Anyway, Podcast. thank you, everybody, and good night. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> my name is Dom. I need to stick my teeth in this morning. Ah, oh, dear. And I'm joined by my wonderful co-founder, Jerry. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm good, thank you very much, Dom. That's thrown me. <laughs> Went Pod through, case. through me. I don't Pod expect case. that. Is that like a case for your iPods? Uh, what, what, your iP- right, okay, you've said iPods and you've put hands up for <laughs> AirPods. <laughs> well, I don't know. Right? AirPods. An iPod is like a from is, is a small MP3 oh. player built by Apple from like 19... 19- Oh, 2017. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, AirPods yeah. are little headphones. <laughs> do they still sell iPods? I don't think they do. I don't think that you can get oh, wow. uh, I love the an, uh, an MP3 player from Apple. I think you can only get a Mac. Yeah, you can get a laptop, a desktop, two forms of desktops, and the iPhone. Oh, no. I love the... Uh... I love the iPod. But I can it means I can shout out the legend very early on cuz my mum still has her iPod and she still uses it <laughs> in a dock and it's got the full kind of nice thick connector that they used to have the really like long one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She still has it still uses it normally to play Brilliant. Michael Bublé while she's cleaning. And I'm now going to get some comment later on that will be like, don't you dare disrespect Michael Bublé. <laughs> Mix the bubble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mix the bubble. Exactly. Um, right. I suppose we should do the like protective spiel bit that we normally do, isn't it? Uh, what's the date today? It's the 23rd of July, 2023. Um, this is episode 26, Jerry. Episode 26. I love it. That's what I made. Love it. That's the bit that threw me really when when I watched back last year's uh, episode to take the notes for because it said episode fourteen and I was like, ah, oh, that must mean we we're like on like ep- nearly on episode twenty and I was like, no wait, this was a year ago, so we've done twelve yeah. podcasts since then. Yeah, episode twenty. As as we said last podcast when we were on the the uh, when we had Fiona in. Mm. We were saying, oh, yeah, we're celebrating our 25th, you know, it's our 25th, so we're now into our third year, mm-hmm. 25th podcast. I thought, it's incredible. Yeah, I haven't yeah. really, I don't think I had anything planned. I did, I, when we embarked on this, I never thought to myself, oh, you know, well, I'll do this for a year. Mm. Or, well, I thought it'd be interesting to go and review it after a year to mm. see. You, you sort of know after a year, don't you, whether or not it's, you know how it's panning out and it just got better and better and better yeah and now we're into year three and it's like i I don't ever want to stop doing this no no and that's exactly what i it's great isn't it it's it's interesting because every time i kind of reflect back on this it there are times when i think oh my god we've been doing this for ages and there's times i've gone it's gone like that it's gone like that like super yeah. super quick nice interruption from larry there <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just as a heads up to listeners. So I'm going to be in the house on my own with the giant douche for <laughs> the next two hours. And if he barks and I have to let him out for a toilet break, I apologize in advance. <laughs> but he is a giant douche and he player hates as well. So if anyone else is enjoying themselves or doing something <laughs> like eating, he starts to play a hate and and he'll like be like, oh, well, no, I'm not having this. I want to go out. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to bark. Nobody I'm going else to do can have something fun. to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah, no one else can have fun. Only I can have fun. So that is such full, a giant douche. Full golden retriever energy on that one. <laughs> such a giant douche. So I apologise for any barking in the background, but that is the giant douche. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, so, I mean, including Larry's, all of the opinions that are expressed on, on, the, on this podcast are our own and don't represent the company that we work for. Um, I'm going to have to apologise for my terrible lighting today, but because it is, it's 10 o'clock <laughs> in the morning, and the sun is directly coming in this side, so, yeah. No, I, I can't. Like a vampire. I can't complain about the sun. Maybe I should whack these up and just fade them out. How about that? On the fly lighting <laughs> thing while I'm doing it. Um, so, yeah, before we start, Jerry, I, I read the best thing this morning. 
um, and I've got to read it to you. So um, I just bought some anti-gloating cream from the pharmacy. Can't wait to rub it in. Oh, <laughs> that's right up my street. <laughs> that is a that is a dad joke. <laughs> it's top tier. That, that is... warms my heart. <laughs> that's absolutely top tier. That one. <laughs> that is top tier. Yeah, I read that this morning. I was like, I've got to send that. I've got to say that today on the Can't podcast. Wait to <laughs> Oh my god! I'm it's just like the one with the oh go go go. No, I was I was saying it's like that joke of the the guy that goes to the doctors and he says, "Doctor, doctor, I've got a strawberry um <laughs> stuck in my ear," and he says, "Yeah, I've got some cream for that." <laughs> it's so stupid, so obvious. You know where it's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can but see still, it coming, but it is still funny. It's still. Legendary. Yes, uh, I've got. There's a couple. That there's a couple. My rudish <laughs> joke, which I am going to say, and I apologise, but um, uh, my penis was once in the Guinness Book of World Records until the librarian told me to take it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's one you can see a mile off, and you still, <laughs> you still. Can't. Do you know? I did. And it is still funny. Okay, um, guy goes to the doctor and he says, uh, "Doctor, doctor, I've, I've got five penises." So, well, how do your trousers fit? He said, "Like a glove." <laughs> so bad. That is great. So that is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start a podcast! Mucking up the intro. <laughs> Several dad jokes, Pod few case. rude ones, <laughs> and here we not go. Not understanding, not understanding the difference between a an iPod <laughs> and an and an AirPod. AirPod. I, I couldn't even think of. Honestly, my okay, I've got to engage brain today. <laughs> there you go. Do pay attention, double. <laughs> Do pay. <laughs> Don't touch that. That's my lunch. <laughs> lunch. I love it. Oh dear. Right. How are we going to get this? I'm not sure we're going to get this podcast back on track, are we? <laughs> yeah, we are. We've got loads to go through, and it's yeah. oh, I just I can't wait. So really this, can't wait. This is uh, we were just discussing this actually before we started recording, but this is I'm going to use air quotes for those that can see me. This is year three of our Vanity Fair interview type questions, uh, but we realised that year one of our Vanity Fair was our second podcast. Uh, which meant that it was more of like a predictions podcast. So our second year was more of a, oh, how have we done in the first year? And our third interview is actually more of a, how have we done in the second year on the podcast? We're on episode 26, so we've done two full years of podcasting plus uh, a bonus one when we were testing out some new software. So yeah, this is like the first review of a year after a whole another whole year review it's kind of like a it's it's going to be a really good um step forward um, and as i mentioned i actually watched this podcast back last year's podcast back so episode 14 and that's when i was like math doesn't compute in my brain because we somehow yeah. had 12 podcasts but yes it's been 12 months since we've done that podcast and there were some things i was like wow we've really grown as a as a podcast and there's other times where i went wow we've done absolutely bugger all on that point <laughs> we're, in, we're in exactly the same place that we were last year so not a lot that we can do about that one but that, change isn't always good <laughs> sometimes it's good to have the consistency isn't it yeah sometimes people take comfort in knowing that we're always going to slate pineapple on pizza <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly i think it was the I think it's the, oh, I'll, I'll, we'll get to them as we get there. But there's okay. definitely one where I go, hmm, we probably should have done a little bit more, more on that one. Um, but I think when I then look back at the podcasts that we then did in the year, we grew in such a different way that it was like, actually, no, it's okay yeah. that it makes sense. Um, and yeah, there's, yeah, it's good. We'll, we'll get into it. So the first question is like, what is your name? And I, and, and conf- Jerry, you you haven't added to my name this year. I can't. I think I've like I put in the well, notes. I think I've actually run out of names for you. I, I've actually got a props for this one. I'm going to cover up half of it. But like, this is my birthday card from Jerry from like. <laughs> <laughs> 
from so my birthday's in December, so this is what six months, just <laughs> nearly six, yeah, just coming up to six months old. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's great about that? So it's got my full. Do you read it off, Jerry? What is my full name? So it's Dominic Lloyd <laughs> White. What is your What is your coined name for me? Dominic <laughs> Julius Irving Morningwood White. Yeah, exactly. Right, so that you has know, Lloyd that one there for some reason. I don't know why you don't include my actual <laughs> I don't know, we just got rid of the Lloyd. But what, what makes me laugh about this card so much? Do you remember what's on the front of this card? Oh, I've got to... Now you're testing my memory now. <laughs> Something about the you know, the man, the myth. Yeah. <laughs> the legend. Yeah, there you go. The bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that bit, but there you go. <laughs> I might blur that when I when I put that out. <laughs> I got that card in Brighton. I remember getting it. Mm. I remember seeing it, and it was way before I needed to post it, but I saw it and thought, right, I've got to get that. I think your was it your Brighton trip, like in like July of that year. We went a couple of times, yeah. Oh, did you go a couple of times? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think the first time you went, would have been around about this podcast. Yes, I love I love Brighton. Yeah. I just love Brighton. And we were in the middle of a heat wave, but we had a major fuel crisis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Yeah, that was shocking. Just that was absolutely ridiculous. When I think back on that now, I just think that was absolutely ridiculous. Mm. And it's been one thing after another after another, just of absolute insanity. Tom Foolery. And that was one of them, people just queuing up at the petrol stations for no reason. We hadn't actually run out of fuel. Somebody started a rumour <laughs> and it caused chaos for weeks. You should find the person. You should find the person that actually started that, that was the cause of that. That would be something. And some... if you get a body on the was, media, it... wouldn't it? Well, yeah, somebody... That's true, actually. Actually, we're coming to that point. Mm. So, so some people can say whatever they want, but if the media doesn't pick it up, yeah, and then and then just sort of broadcast that out and cause hysteria, then it's not a problem, is it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, for for something like that, it wouldn't have been a problem. If somebody had said a passing comment, and somebody on the receiving end had panicked. That mm. would have been panic amongst those two people or yes. a small group of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. not countrywide causing absolute. <laughs> Bad pandemonium. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. The, uh, the, the funny thing that I read this morning about the media was um, obviously the, the BBC, um, I'm going to call it the BBC scandal, where the Sun published some stuff. And obviously the BBC News wrote an article on it. And it simply said, BBC News approached the BBC for a comment and the BBC refused to give the BBC News a comment. <laughs> yeah. Which I found very funny this morning. <laughs> That's like Inception. It is, isn't it's, it? It's a dream within a dream. It's exactly. a dream. It is. It's a it's a comment within a comment. Like, what can you do in terms of like or a bird, bird in a bird? And now we're getting to Russian doll stuff. Or, or what is that stupid oh. nursery rhyme? There was an old lady who swallowed a really fly. Swallowed a fly. <laughs> I don't know why she swallowed. She swallowed a fly. Yeah, there wasn't all day. But bird and a bird, you've got, haven't you? You've got goose. Mm. You've got chicken and a goose. And in the chicken, you've got a quail. And in the quail, you've got, I don't know, sparrow. And in the sparrow, you've got hummingbird. Yeah. Or whatever. And then you roast it all. It's <laughs> lovely. And then you carve it, and there you go. Bird and a bird. <laughs> bird. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot say that's something that we've we burn, we burn. A hummingbird. I'm just trying to see why no one's going to cook a hummingbird, hummingbird and eat a hummingbird. But you know, and how do you catch one anyway? Whoa! I guess I'm getting too animated. Whoa, yeah. there, Leslie. <laughs> Calm down. There will, there will be somebody out there that will turn around and say, "Oh, hummingbird is quite a delicacy." Because yeah, it'll probably. be like it'll probably be something for posh restaurants. Because at posh restaurants, you have yes. twenty-seven courses, but then they give you like, oh, you've got a steak, and then it's like you know the plate's like this big, and the steak's like this, and then they've done like a, you know, they've gotten like some 
pea sauce that they've just kind of smushed around <laughs> so it's like nice and decorative. <laughs> when it comes it's like to... a little like a one pound coin. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, that's yeah. just being generous then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going to go for two pound, but I thought no, that's <laughs> yeah. You're overdoing it. The only risk that you have at, uh, at an expensive restaurant is dying of starvation or your <sighs> or a heart attack when you see the bill. <laughs> so friends or both, or both, yeah, actually. <laughs> so I went with um, a couple of years ago. No, it was about three years ago. I think we went with friends to a really, really posh restaurant, which is not really my style. I don't do posh restaurants, but they. They do posh restaurants all the time. So they said, uh, and I think it was their anniversary or something. It was a special occasion. And they, mm-hmm. anyway, they invited us. And we went to this posh restaurant where um, I think I think it is Michelin starred, but it's a seafood restaurant. And then you can't actually choose what you want to eat. So I was really triggered as soon as we <laughs> sat down. <laughs> and it's like, right, we're going to bring out the most fabulous, like, eight courses for you. Mm. I was like, okay. Uh, where's the menu? He's like, there's no menu. <laughs> uh, this is a printout of what we're going to be serving you, um, because it's all based on like the fresh catch of the yeah, day. Yeah, what did you what, what the vegetables yeah. and yeah, and I thought, oh for goodness sake! <laughs> so <clears throat> they'd taken that control away from me, and I didn't like that. And anyway, they they the ended up into corner. All this different food. <laughs> yeah, they backed it. Nobody puts baby in a corner and i thought oh i'm really not happy about this so they anyway they brought the food out which is very nice but it was so it was your typical you know modern cuisine and literally i finished and uh and anyway we left the restaurant and i said to my friend fancy kfc i was gonna say and he laughed and he thought i was joking (laughs) i was being serious i could do with some hot wings (laughs) and a zinger tower I'm not joking. Um, and I tried everything to convince him to go to KFC or to grab a kebab on the way back. <laughs> grab a kebab. Having, and he was, yeah, he was having none of it. I was gutted. I was so hungry. Anyway, there's my fine dining, <laughs> fine dining story. Ever, true story. I don't think I've ever done hashtag true story. I don't think I've I've ever done like a proper proper fancy restaurant. I think the only time I've actually been disappointed on the size of something was when I went to America this year. And I was expecting, you know, I was expecting like food, right? And it just wasn't, it just, I, I can't get my head around that, Tom. Yeah. I must, I must admit when you came back and you were telling me about the food, I thought either Dom's been really unlucky. Uh, Yeah. Potentially. Well, I say either. I think you were really unlucky. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody come back from the States and go, yeah, the food wasn't that great, and they were really small portions. Small portions? What? Really small You portion. must have lucked out. You must, must. have lucked out. I'm oh, sorry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say right there. small portions is harsh, but it was no bigger than like a standard English pub, so to speak. Yeah, the portions. No. I mean, where when we went to, we went to Florida, um, and I've been to Los Angeles on, uh, as well, mm. and lived in New York, and it's just the portions are big. Yeah, that's what. Like I you ask for a pastrami sandwich, and you'll get like thirty layers of pastrami. Mm. You get halfway through the sandwich, and you're like, I can't. No, I don't know. No, if I'm going to finish this. Just get dis- meat sweats. Pointed the whole time. <laughs> whole time I was that's out there. Unbelievable. Mm. Mm. You and you lucked out. You lucked know, out big <clears throat> time. The only thing I did get to experience that I felt was proper American was the cars. So obviously we got transport to and from the airport. So they rock up in this. Like, there's no other word for it. It's just an excessively massive SUV. It's just not required <laughs> to be that So, big. like the GMC, those yeah, GMC like, pickups, GMC. that kind of thing. Yeah, but, like, when the when the top of the bonnet comes up to, like, my shoulder line, yeah. and I'm six yeah. foot three, it's a bit like, you wouldn't lose small children in, in that blind spot. You'd lose grown <laughs> adults. Like... You'd lose a, a bus, right? If you turn too quick, you just, it was just, they were just a bit mental. And then the drinks, the drink, the drinks were like, you know, the, especially the fast food restaurant ones. It's just like, oh, I'll get like a, I'll get a small, it doesn't exist. The smallest is a large. And then it's like large grande and then um, a bucket. <laughs> just call it a bucket. Right. That's because that's what it is. Right. It is a bucket. <laughs> 
You know what? I'm surprised you didn't but, luck out on the cars as well and get like a smart car. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was expecting all the cars sure. in America. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was expecting. I was like, I want a, like because I was when we were sat waiting for the at the at the airport and the, they're like it's streaming through Orlando Airport like as the on the pickup side. And there are, there are, you know, the full Dodges, the GMCs, everything like that. And there was, you know, there was some European and Asia makes as well, but they were like extra big versions that you don't get in the UK. Mm. Um, and I was like, I was saying, like, I will be disappointed if we get picked up in something like you know, pretty, <laughs> like a standard. And I was like, this, if they're driving an Uber for us, I don't want them to pick me up in a, in, in a, um, in a saloon or a sedan as they would call it i want them to come in a like a pickup truck or an suv because i i want to experience like america in in big unfortunately they did but yeah uh otherwise i would have been really annoyed and would have massively lucked out the whole (laughs) whole time so this was after about 19 hours of traveling as well so i was (laughs) was tired as (laughs) so yeah when you said about the size of the 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 uh, beverages, beverage. Hmm. Um, <laughs> which reminds me, <laughs> whenever I go and read like the the different types of coffee that they've got <laughs> in Starbucks, or I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before, but I'll just just to recap, if I have, hmm. um, it always reminds you like what, what do you ask for? Do you ask for an Ariana Grande <laughs> or a Demi Lovato or I, I don't know. That's what it sounds like to me. It, yeah. None of it actually makes any sense. No, it doesn't make <laughs> any sense. What happened to small, medium, large? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the best bit, the bit that really baffled me about the drinks, right? All drink sizes, free refills. Yeah. So why would you buy the big one? <laughs> like, what the no, look, you're not thinking smartly. What you do is you get too small. Instead of one large. Uh, and then you carry both of them and just keep refilling them. That's smart thinking. <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> uh, American. Uh, ironically, uh, I'm actually wearing my uh, American t shirt when oh, I was look out at there. that. Nice. I can get that. Oh, there you go. The palm Orlando. trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's the only cotton t shirt I actually own, I think, nowadays. And then <laughs> all my other ones are just gym t shirts these days. What are they made of? The dry, the dry fit material that you normally get, rather than okay. rather than like, so they're, I don't know, they're different. I've lost my I thought you could only get, I don't know. I thought you could only get cotton t-shirts. You're now yeah. talking about dry fit exotic materials yeah. no one's ever heard of. Yeah, dry fit. Because is that polyester? Is that nylon? Is that? Oh, I don't know, Jerry. You're <laughs> asking questions that I'm just. <laughs> No, I want to know the <laughs> I want to know the fiber composition <laughs> of dry fit. I don't know. No, I'll look it up. I'll Google it in my own time. <laughs> right, should we move on to the we're we're only on the second no. question, we're only twenty five <laughs> minutes in. I've still got more to unpack. Yeah, no, go for it. Um so we already mentioned it was the, it's the twenty third of July, so it's been three hundred and sixty six days since we did the last we recorded the last one because we did it on the twenty second. Last time. Um, this is also apparently the time that you fell about because we got on to the best Benedict Cumberbatch names for the year. Oh, no. <laughs> don't get me started on Benedict Cumberbatch. I'll lose it. There's no... Don't get me started. I'm not even looking it up. I'm not even going to Google it. No, There are so many, and there are too many to choose from. <laughs> there are too many to choose from. There are too, way too many great. to choose from. It's a very... It's a, they are very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already done dad jokes in this podcast, so we can't possibly look at Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, jokes. that's true. We've got more dad jokes. We need to sprinkle in some more dad jokes as well as we think of them. <laughs> we've got plenty of them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, it's been, yeah, 366 days since our last podcast. And uh, since our last podcast? No, since our last vanity. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm properly You're... losing it today. Listen, you're losing it. You got both of us are losing it. You got podcase. We need to add to the list. Podcase, iPods, iPads, AirPods. I don't even know what we're talking about. Now you're talking about <laughs> 366 days since we last did a podcast. 
You're not absolutely true. right. <laughs> this is our last Vanity Fair podcast. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you think he did something wrong in a previous life, <laughs> <laughs> and this is just karma into this next life. The way that this year has gone. I prefer karma. <laughs> Hashtag just saying. <laughs> no. Hashtag embrace the spice. It's from a korma? <laughs> well, korma it's still is... got spices in it, though. <laughs> yeah, but is the korma is like the the weakest. I was about to say weakest of the curries. I think it is. It's not that it's not very is... nice, but... No, it's lovely. But I think it, you're right. I think it is the, the curry that you can sort of feed. Like if you take young children to an mm. Indian restaurant, they tend to have korma, don't they? Mm. I mean, I've never, I can't remember the last time I had a korma. No, not from a restaurant. I don't think I've ever had a korma from a restaurant. But then I have bought, so you can get some really nice ready-made korma sauces. We're <laughs> getting a proper tangent here. Yeah. You can get really nice korma sauces from the supermarket. And then I load those with chili anyway. So then it becomes yeah. a really hot korma. So <laughs> how does that work? I don't know, but I like the flavor of the korma, but I want the heat. I'm a chili fiend. Actually, when I met up with, um, school friends who are going to be joining our podcast later this year um so there's myself and and my friend uh and we've both been i mean we're both addicted to hot food and it was so funny we went to a vietnamese restaurant and they had these bottles of chili sauce out on the tables and if you looked across all of the tables there were hardly any hardly any chili sauce used up literally by the time we finished the meal my friend and i had finished about half or we'd had half a bottle each we were just like rah, just squeezing this <laughs> hot sauce on everything. <laughs> Going, this is good. This is really good hot sauce. In the meantime, like sweating. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, like, if you're not sweating, it's it's here. <laughs> dis- dis- disappointing. Ah, oh, it was brilliant. Loved it. You're a lunatic. <laughs> I just love hot. I am actually addicted to hot food. I don't like. I'm a bit. I'm kind of in the middle. Like I, I don't want it so hot that it literally burns my face off. But. <laughs> Like I'm at the stage where it's like I need a little bit of spice and flavour and bits and pieces like that. So you see, you're already on the path. It's a slippery slope. Probably <laughs> this time next year, you're going to be like, oh yeah, you know, I was having Scotch bonnet chilies. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go anything. I don't want to go too mad, but I'll just like munch on those whilst I have my sandwich. <laughs> I'll have a cheese sandwich and go, uh, Dom, I think you've got a problem here. Cheese sandwich and Scotch bonnet. I think this has escalated. <laughs> It's like that, uh, that, that um, anchor man, isn't it? Oh boy, this, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of escalating quickly, why have you written a hard hitting question right in the second question? In the second, yeah. Uh, I don't uh, know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, it just came to me and I thought, oh, let's, let's go. Because I, I had this document open while you were typing that and I saw that pop up and I was like, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. What, the fringe? I don't either, by the way. <laughs> well, uh... so t- t- no, t- actually, I do. I do have for, a life lesson. For, for, for viewers, listeners, etc. Jerry has written in the notes, if we had to choose one life lesson from this past year, what would it be? <laughs> I was like, what? This is the second question in the Vanity Fair. No. <laughs> like, ease me in slowly. <laughs> We've dived into the need, icy waters. <laughs> I need a gentle massage before you do anything. No, no, you don't. You need to just go. You need to do a running bomb into the ice bath. No. That's what you need to do. <laughs> cannonball. <laughs> Can- yeah, full on cannonball. Go for it. I, I have got a sc- If you've got one, you can start. I have got one. <laughs> I have got one actually. I've worked, I've reflected on it, and we're going to be talking about it in more detail later when we're, <laughs> we're very, swimming very around very... in the icy waters and the with the ice cubes. Um, the if, if you're hoping that stress will go away, then you're going to be hoping. You're going to be, you know, if you're going to hold your breath in the hope that that the stress is going to go away. You're going to be holding your breath for a very, very long time. Mm. And so I've just decided that either I physically remove myself from that stress or mentally remove myself from that stress. 
even if it means just blocking it out in such a way that I think I just, I just don't even want to. There, it's there almost are... like a putting your fingers in your ears and going, la, 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 when you think about what's actually happened in the last 12 months, this is why I said that sometimes I'm like, God, not, not, not much has changed when I hear how we talk on the podcast. No, but actually, yeah. what has actually changed mm. this year has been quite a lot on what we've, what, what's, what we've been through. Um, that is a really good kind of remove yourself from the, the stressful situation or remove the st- stressful situation. Um, there are a couple of times that I would like to have burnt a few stressful situations literally to the ground because I think that would have been the most productive way to do it, not necessarily the uh, the most legal way to do it, shall we say. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we you can't... There, there's a book that I've read um, uh, by Mark Manson. It's called The Simple Art of Not... No, The Subtle oh, Art of Not yes. Giving a Fuck. And... In that, he says, don't hope for a a world of no problems. Hope for a, sorry, a life of no problems. Hope for a life with simple problems because you can't have a life of no problems. Like if you're insanely rich, that just brings on other problems, right? You know, how do you like save your money correctly? What do you spend your money on? How do you, you know, things like, who are your actual friends or who are gold diggers type things, you know, those types of problems, having a lot of money still brings on, on problems. How do you squirrel it away in an offshore account? So you don't pay taxes. Short answer. You shouldn't pay taxes, Um, (laughs) but it still brings on problems. It's not a life with no problems. It's just different problems to, if you have very little money. Um, And that I suppose is one of those things where you, you have to sort of say to yourself, change your problems to be ones that you can live with or deal with in in a sense of uh they aren't going to cause you massive undue stress and on top of that actually the quickest way to happiness still would say is actually solving problems you don't like the person with no problems is not the happy, the happy person because they aren't usually doing anything or productive or they don't get that satisfied feeling True, they'll probably be bored. Is that is that the one the book? So you've read the book, you finished the book. Have I've you? read that one, and I've read his yeah. second book. Is that the one where he he's talking about the um the Japanese soldier? Yes, Hiro Inota, yes. which is yes. one of which is one of our facts that I might have read out before. Yes, you have read that. Yes, you have yeah. read that out. You have, yeah. Hero Nota, yeah, where so it. Hero Nota and his men were part of the Japanese army in World War Two, and they were on I can forget, but it was um, it might have been the Philippines, and the Japanese way is never surrender, and they when World War obviously they dropped the two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and um, they. Uh, obviously, the Japanese eventually surrendered. Um, interestingly, I heard for the first time that the broadcast from that and the Japanese emperor at the time said, we have to do the hardest thing in the world, surrender. And that, you know, that just kind of emulates the way the way of, you know, the way that they live. Um, but yeah, Hiro Onoda didn't believe the leaflets. And so he carried on fighting for something like 40 years after the war. Like he remained in the rainforests in the Philippines fighting against the, the people. And they were like, dude, like the war's over, like leave us alone <laughs> sort of thing. I'm just trying to have my burger. But that, that exact me. story is, a, is, is actually around having no problems does makes you unhappy because when Hiro Nota came back to Japan, obviously he was worshipped like a hero type thing. Um, he became very unhappy because the problems that he saw with modern day Japan, you know, the lack, you know, they've lost some of their traditions, you know, the modern society, you know, this was about 1980s sort of thing. Um, and he tried to really instill that back into like the younger generations by, with his fame, but he failed and it made him really unhappy until to the point that he eventually, he moved to Brazil 
I think, and lev- lived out a qu- much quieter life because he was happier in the forests of the Philippines, despite the fact that he was effectively fighting a war, um, because he, um, how to phrase it, he uh, was like had a purpose, so to speak, purpose. Mr. Anderson, it's a purpose (laughs) that brings us together, the purpose that defines us. Um, And, and, and therefore, you know, he was, he was air quotes happier. Now it's a, this is where the the whole premise of the book, wow, I'm going into a bit of review is to, is about choosing good values. Now, obviously, even though it made him happy, it was a bit of a rubbish value to be still fighting for a war that you didn't know exist. But the really good example, another good example of that is, um, You've heard of Metallica, um, the yes, uh, yeah, and I they heard kicked, about this as well. Yeah, so th- this is the same Dave stories. In the, was yeah, it? Dave Mustaine yeah. was kicked out of Metallica, and he formed Megadeth. Now, Metallica, uh, M- Megadeth are hugely successful. They've got like you know they've toured around the world and stuff like that, and they've sold you know millions and millions of yeah, albums. Huge band, aren't they? Right. If you were if you were at that point, you would be happy if your like sat you know your reference or your value was to be a really good band like you've nailed it absolutely nailed world it world famous yeah world, world famous, famous. selling millions of copies yeah. dave mustaine's value is to be better than metallica the band that kicked him out now metallica just unfortunately are bigger than megadeth right that's that's just a fact at the moment in terms of album sales which means that despite his success he's still unhappy and he said that multiple times in interviews. <laughs> and no the, way. Yeah, and the other the other band that had a similar thing was um I don't know them as well, but the Beatles kicked out a drummer before they had is it Ringo was the drummer? No. Yeah, Ringo was the drummer, yeah. Yeah. So before they kicked out before they brought in Ringo, they kicked out another one and I forget his name. But he never became successful, so to speak. But he is actually happier than he says. I am happier now than if I was in the Beatles because being kicked out led me to meet my wife and to have children and to do a, a have a whole different career on my own. And because I don't compare myself to the success of the Beatles, I just compare to what I wanted. I'm significantly happier. You know that that's made me happier and things like so that. So that's interesting. So <clears throat> similar circumstances. In fact, exactly the same circumstances, but one person mentally decided to take a different view mm. on what happened yeah. so dave mustaine couldn't let it go mm. <laughs> let it go whereas this other guy went oh yeah okay obviously that was meant to be because this has now led me that down a different path yeah that's exactly it okay and it is that kind of reinforces my my life lesson Yes. It's why social media is terrible because comparison is the thief of joy. Megadeth yeah. is comparing himself to Metallica. It's the thief of his joy. You know, he's hugely successful. Rock, you know, metal band. Oh, yeah. But because he compares himself to, to Metallica, he's unhappy. That's insane. And that's why social media is quite toxic because you end up comparing yourself on social media or things like that. It's, it's, it's funny how like the world works and that you can pick up these lessons. It's also hilariously amusing how I can also observe myself from a third person and go, what the fringe are you doing? You're doing everything <laughs> wrong that you shouldn't be doing. You know, I spend myself comparing myself to people online. I, you know, I look at the stats and do things like that. And yeah. It's human nature, isn't it? It's, it's human nature now based on the environment that we're being put in. It's very difficult to avoid. Yeah, human nature, what? Shaped by culture, shaped yeah. by... Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's a lot harder to now avoid comparisons because of the connections that you can have through social media, yeah. the way that the media is made really clickbait. I want to say media, I mean like news media or any media really is made really clickbaity and, and you know, falsifications and things like that. It's why the environment that you're plonked into is a little bit more... A little bit more... Can, can I just make an observation, just going on a very slight tangent, though? Yeah. I know, because I think this is what this podcast is going to be like. It's going to be probably very poignant, lots of poignant stuff in here. 
punctuated by moments of just absolute fucking stupid, <laughs> stupid comments like the one I'm about to make, which is I'm going like this. So for listeners, I'm resting my head on my hand, on the fingers of my hand, and then I just took a look at my arm and went, my God, that's hairy. <laughs> I've got a hairy arm, so I'm lowering it. Or I'm going to have to put a sleeve over it. No one wants to see that level of hair on a Sunday morning. <laughs> That's shockingly bad. Is that what your wife says to you? <laughs> <laughs> My wife doesn't talk to me. <laughs> She's given up communicating with me. <laughs> she can't take it anymore. Sad enough. Not what I find talking to this guy. What, what I find ironic is obviously I don't have a lot of hair on my head because I cut my all my hair off. So <laughs> it's like I don't know what that means. If you want any, I've got some on my arm. <laughs> More than happy to donate. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is what I love about the podcast is sometimes it just completely throws me in. You have to really engage your brain to bring this back onto state. You weren't expecting arm hair, were you? No, I wasn't expecting arm hair. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the next... <clears throat> I, I don't have a... I think I've ranted enough about your point to sort of say, maybe that is our life lesson for this year. I think there's a lot to be said for it. Well, we just, we've just used that example between mm. Dave Mustaine. Mustaine? <laughs> Mustard. Mustaine. Must, Mustaine. Must, Mustaine. Must, Mustaine. <laughs> Mustaine. <laughs> Do you, you want to get sure rid of mud stains <laughs> at 40 degrees? <laughs> Mustain. Dave Mustain. Mud stain. No. Mustaine. So that difference between him and the drummer, it's exactly the same circumstances. They both got kicked out of the band. Yes. And yet they both ended up having, one ended up having a very fulfilled life by the sound of it, whilst the other one oh. seems very bitter. Hmm. So what's the difference? The difference is their mindset. Mindset. What, what, the, how their values. That they to, their values, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And it's good, actually, because actually my biggest life lesson this year that I've done is just to try and hold myself to certain values. But as Mark Manson will say, not shitty values. Like, am I liked by everybody? It's not. It's For me, it's about being open, honest, and op open openness, honesty, and kindness of kind of the three that I picked up this year or really tried to work on. And that is, try, you know, I try and be as friendly as I can to people. There are certainly some people that test my patience with that one, but at least <laughs> with openness and honesty, that's kind of, you can always be that. It doesn't matter the outcome yeah. or how people feel, but you can always be open and honest. Um, some people may say that I've been too on it, open and honest, but that's by the what's way. too open? Yeah, but, but what's too open? What's too? Th there's no such thing as being too open or too honest. It's just the way that you deliver a mess message, yes. isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, there exactly. Was, um, there was a great clip, isn't there? By um, oh, Simon are you going to say Sinek? Simon, Simon yeah. Sinek? Yeah, where he talks did you about share that with me. I might I have. You did. Or I might have shared that with you. Is is you talking about the one where he goes and sees the friends play? And it was yes, it's a bit terrible. Yes, that's the <laughs> yeah. One. So. Yeah. For context for the listeners, I'll try and see if I can remember it. But basically, Simon Sunak says that you should always be honest. Um, and he says, but honesty doesn't have to be brutal. Some people use it as an excuse to just be brutally honest, which which for, them, for me would then go against my kindness value. Yeah. Yeah. And what he bas what they basically says, um, so this friend invites him to a, to a play or a performance. I can't remember what it was. And... Um, she comes up to him afterwards and, you know, is like, what did you think of the play? You know, what did you think? Knowing that he's open and honest. And he uh, is like, well, she's not in the right mood for me to go. Actually, do you know what? It was a bit awful. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Shit. It was, yeah. It, it, you can't, you don't want to put a downer on someone. And so he very simply says, it was wonderful to see you perform, which he, which was true. It was good to see her perform just because the rest of the you know some of it was a bit dodgy or whatever and and in that moment that's what she wants to hear right he's being honest and kind in the situation which you know she can reciprocate 
and or you know can receive without being crushed so to speak and then he says a couple of days later she phones him up and she says okay what did you really think of the play and you can tell that they're in a different mood they mm. they have the ability to receive the information and he can be critically honest and he says well okay here's some feedback points that i thought about and he doesn't go in to say what those feedback points were or what the, the you know how to do that but essentially what he's sort of saying is there is a time and a place to be to be no you should always be honest but there's a time and place to give certain feedback right and that's you know this is it's the same thing i take you know in my day to day with dealing with people if i've got somebody or 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 actually the most important phrase that i learned this year with my friends and families you know when some of them are going through tough times or you know even the people that line report to me is do you want to have a conversation about do you want a solution do you want to talk about it or do you want a distraction from it and yes i do three words um <laughs> i've always done that by the way <laughs> so if you count on your fingers no. Thumb. It is actually easy. You're right. It is easier to do that than that. If I don't know why. Comfortable. I've, I have always done that. I like that. And I do it off both hands. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, like but that. yeah, those those three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but though that that just turn a <clears throat> phrase because because naturally I go into like, well, you've got a problem. Is a solution. And sometimes you don't want the solution, right? Sometimes you just need to talk about it. So if they go, oh, no, I just want to talk about it. Okay, then I can just listen. And they can talk about it. And normally they'll come to a solution on their own. Or sometimes they're like, do you know what? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want a solution. Can we talk about something else? Great. That's fine. And that's knowing, that's the difference between being honest and going, we need to really solve this, you know, brutally, whatever it needs to be. And actually understanding that people's thoughts and feelings matter into when you can give open and honest feedback. Mm. I, know, I feel like I've had okay. two big rants already. <laughs> it's not no, they're not rants. Minutes. No, these aren't rants. These are really good. This is what this podcast is about. Yes. This is so... the distinct bit. <laughs> yeah, we had the jovial bit. We had the jovial bit. There'll be more joviality, but, but this is good. Yeah, this is good. This is good. So, yeah. I think mean, that's probably the lesson I learned, actually, this year. Because I did learn oh, yeah. that lesson this year. So. There you go. Now that. I come to my own conclusion in some d- kind of long and complicated way. <laughs> you solved it <laughs> without realizing that you were solving it and yeah. came to the solution. I didn't really know what it was solving at the time, but I seem to have solved Doesn't something. You've, <laughs> solved it. You've solved it. You did. Yeah, there was it. no brief. <laughs> yeah, there was no brief. Nothing. No instructions, but you nailed it. Uh, there was a bit of a full hashtag Leroy Jenkins there. <laughs> Leroy! Jenkins. I'm going to get that clip into this podcast <laughs> <laughs> when I edit this later. <laughs> okay, third question. Um, so last year it was all about me ditching Netflix, and um, but I suppose the main question is what are we currently watching? Um, and it's interesting, I watched mine back <laughs> and I just said, I've ditched Netflix, which I have. Like, I haven't watched a single thing on Netflix in a year, I've realized. Okay. And I said, oh, next week I'm going to start Miss Marvel. I still haven't watched Miss Marvel. <laughs> I've not watched any. Miss Marvel or Miss Marple? Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I think you should watch Miss Marple. Well, Miss Marple. <laughs> but um, I looked back. I've not touched I've not touched a single television show this year. You haven't watched a single series of anything or a single only films. That's I've only it. watched films this year. Okay. But not obviously not on Netflix because you cancelled your subscription. No, no, no. Well, no, I, 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 I went into my sister has the subscription, so I've still got the account, but my sister pays for it. Oh yeah, which is now being cracked down on. We're aware. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So, how have you found it? Do you know what? it's? Uh, this is going to be a really weird, poignant point. Um. How do I phrase this? So I have a list of television programs in, uh, like, so I have like a, um, 
it's almost like a mini database. I use Notion. It's called Notion. And it's got several sections. And I also have a thing called Todoist. So like to-do list, but minus the L. Right. Have you got like an app for everything? I do have an app for everything, right? And okay. the t- nice. Todoist is, is my to-do tasks. And th- that's really great because I can do like reoccurring things like every first Monday of the month, take out the bins because that's when the bins go out, for example. Right, which is really good for because I don't remember that stuff. Sorry, your bins only go out once a month. Uh, no, it's once every three weeks. But it, it well, kind still of, once every yeah. three weeks. Yeah, the black bin only goes once every three weeks. What the fringe? I know. <laughs> Don't get me started about the waste services in summer. Oh, for goodness' sake, Tom! This is. I mean, I knew the but, recycling situation with you is bad, but that's that's a yeah, shocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it's okay. I live on my own, so I own, in three weeks I only get like I'm only halfway up in three weeks. Right, but if you're a family of let's say five, yeah, how no, does no, that no, work then? Not, not a chance. <laughs> oh, for goodness' sake! Squish. <laughs> That's but yeah. Okay. Welcome to Somerset. Right. <laughs> Welcome to Somerset. Wow. Woo-hoo! Wow. That's your. There's your council tax being spent oh, wisely. Don't don't get me started on that either, because because then I have the singles tax on top of the council tax. But because I live on my own, I don't get a fifty percent discount. I get a twenty percent discount. Okay, I'm not going to. Yeah, this is one. Welcome. For, I, I think we should we should devote a whole. I could I could I could, de- I could devote the whole year's worth of podcast. Honestly, inanity of what I've just heard. <sighs> It's brilliant. Just making oh, it's making me angry. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry. I can't remember how. We, yeah, so to do to do is to do, to do has, has, has has those for me, right? Because I don't remember those things, and you know there'll be things as things in there like remember to clean the flat on the Saturday and do, you know and what needs to happen and bits and pieces. And then Notion is like a notes database, so I have like um. Like I've got loads, all the podcast notes go in there that I personally make. So I've, it's and it's literally almost like a database of of things. Um, and on this is like again, I've noticed I come onto a big tangent and I come back, but it, we will come back to the television shows. So in there, I have a section that is uh, it's called entertainment, and so it has all the books that I want to read. It has all the games that I want to read, uh, play. Um, and then it has all the television shows that I want to watch, all the movies I want to watch. Um, so both already out and upcoming. So it's got dates for the upcoming ones. But, you know, there's things like I want to watch uh, Face Off, The Rock, <laughs> which I still haven't seen. <laughs> so they've only really just been released. If, but... you, if you look at it in, <laughs> relatively in terms of the age of the Earth, which is, and the Earth has been... <laughs> habitable for the last i don't know three billion years it's quite recent <laughs> they're quite recent releases yeah, it's quite recent you'll get around releases. to it but i promise i'm getting there so <laughs> i've got all of that and i've got them all split so you know i've got like what i want to watch television wise for some strange reason as soon as i put a television and, and as soon as i go right i want to watch a television show so i'll move the television show i'll put it on to do it and i put like recurring i watch every monday or whatever as soon as it's on my to-do list it becomes like a burden. I think, oh, I can't be bothered to do that. <laughs> like, so television, I know, I don't understand the psychology behind it. So it's almost like adding it to my to-do list makes it a harder task than if I just went, oh, I feel like watching this episode today. I think for things like that, you need to ditch that to-do list. Yes. Yes. So it's that's ha- squeezing the fun out of it. So that's exactly what I've done in the last... Literally in the last like month, is to go okay. actually just going to remove. Like I've still got a database because I of the stuff I want to watch, so I don't forget anything. Because um, there's loads of old stuff that I want to watch as well. Is it a rela- is it a, a relational database? <laughs> Not quite. Okay, it's just a document store. It's just a document. Oh, store. okay. <laughs> It wouldn't surprise me, Dom, if you came out and went, actually, (laughs) it is. It's just the way my brain, I don't know, it's really strange. I have to have something to, like, engage my brain and make me actually do something. But for some reason, as soon as I put television shows onto my thing, whereas I'll quite happily, I'll probably, I probably watch a couple of hours of YouTube in an evening or something like that. Okay. But I just won't pick up a television show. 
because you made too big a thing of it. That's why. Mm. Just too much build up. Yeah, you, you, it, you made it too much of a thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to put it on my list. Oh, yeah. now it's like a to do list. Yes, exactly. I've exactly. got time for this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly. That's exactly. It's like you're reading my mind there. <laughs> Love it. Love it. It's. I'm, I'm just going to say, right? There is. There is one point in the last year's podcast where I said, if anyone kind of listens to me on the podcast and goes, "Oh, it sounds like Dom needs help," right? And I said, "I don't." Right. Uh, sometimes there are times. I maybe I do. <laughs> like, maybe I do need a little bit of help, and I'll come need, on to that later. I think you need a noticed. No, a to doist. Is that what's it called? Oh, my I brain is much. An anti to do list. You need an anti to do list. You need a. <laughs> you need a to do list intervention. You need I somebody do. to just come along and just go. Empty to do list. Are you mm. sure you want to put this in the recycle bin? Yes, empty <laughs> recycle bin. Bosh, done. Start from scratch. There you Start go. That was a notification. I've just deleted your to-do list. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's one of our friends. It's uh, it's a friend of the podcast. It's just Hello, it's friend a... of the podcast. <laughs> you have to guess which friend now. I reckon it's Samwise Gamgee. Nope. Oh. Second guest will probably get it. Laura. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I another a social media post. Come and look at this Instagram reel that I've sent you. It's the only way she communicates these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put a note in just to say, is it just me or is the world of TV and film running out of ideas? So I'm struggling to find things now. So um, the quality of things that are, the, that are being produced now has just, it's, it's all about volume. It's not about, it's all about quantity. It's not about quality anymore. Mm. And and I I just now refuse to watch something for the sake of it. It's got to a point I've just fed up. Um, and then every now and again you'll get an absolute gem mm. of a program. So the last program I watched, um, series that I watched, and and I knew it was good because I just didn't fall asleep through it, <laughs> and or I didn't feel like just like I didn't pick up my phone or decide to just go and read my book or you know anything. Um, Basically, I get so bo- it's 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 similar to your thing about the to do list, and I feel mm. pressure once I start watching something, and I think, oh, this is too much pressure now. I'm not enjoying mm. it, but I feel like I have to watch it, and then yes, and then I just get really irritated. But I just want to be engrossed in something, and actually, it's the White House Plumbers. So it was the uh, it was on HBO, but you can get mm. it on Amazon now, Amazon mm-hmm. Prime, and it's about the Watergate scandal. So it's about Howard Hunt and Gordon Liddy. Ah. Um, and I know you like your docu series, don't you? Well, this is actually a yes, I do like a docu series. I do love a good docu series, but this is uh, this actually is a um, a series that that's based on those real events, and it's with so there's um, dramatization. Yeah, it's with that was thank you, Tom. That was what I was looking for. Um, it's with uh, Woody Harrelson and uh, Justin oh, okay. Theroux, um, and they're brilliant absolutely brilliant in it justin through his character is you know how he portrays liddy is absolutely <laughs> incredible i mean i love that guy he's amazing as an actor um and yeah it, it's it's very very good so you, you got to actually see watergate from the perspective of people that were actually involved in it rather than people that were trying to expose the the scandal um and yeah it was great loved it but Everything else that I've been watching since then, it's been like, oh, that's a bit rubbish. Well, that's, I don't know. You know, you get sort of halfway through episode one and go, no. It's like eight episodes in this season. I'm not doing that. I'm not investing that time. Mm. Um, and, and I do actually feel like they've run out of ideas. I suppose that's probably one of the reasons, another reason why I haven't watched as much is because all of my, all the television is Star Wars or Marvel related mostly. And there's a lot of it. <laughs> there is a lot of it because there's there's a lot of story. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's it's a big story, isn't it? To tell. Yes. So if I just go through like what I've got, so I've got, I still haven't watched the Punisher Jessica Jones from when it when they were on Netflix for Marvel, and then and now I'm behind by Miss Marvel, She Hulk, and they've just started Secret Invasion, which has just come out, and I'm a bit like, oh, I just. Ugh. A little bit. 
<laughs> and then Star it's Wars. Pressure, Dom. It's pressure. It is like I, I want to watch. Like I've, I've watched. Like I've, I've just not watched any Star Wars stuff. So if you don't include the Clone Wars, like of which there oh, yeah, are about seven that. seasons, of it, yeah, and each one has like twenty-two episodes. Good lord. <laughs> So there are 104, I think there's about 140 episodes I think I've got to watch on the Clone Wars or something ridiculous like that. Now, okay, they're 20 minutes long, but so even if you divide that yeah, by three, that's still what? That's a lot. divided by three, six, nine, 12, so it's 40. There's still 40 hours of television there. And then, but that then doesn't include that I still haven't watched then The Bad Batch, the Book of Boba Fett, Obi Wan Kenobi, Star Wars Andor, Tales of the Jedi, The Badge Batch season two, and then The Mandalorian season three. And it's just this like this is all on your to do list. This is all on the to do no, list. No, that's bonkers. And it's just lo- that's bonkers, just... man. You're gonna be. <laughs> it's just long. It's overwhelming, Dom. No wonder yeah. you're not getting around to it. That's yeah. too much. It's yeah. overwhelming. And I even started the House of the Dragon. I'm just not finished it. Oh. Um. That's too much. So, yeah. I, I prefer the variety I think I've got at the moment, but maybe it's, maybe at some point, maybe this time next year I might have actually made a dent into my television watching. Um, yeah, situation. I wouldn't set a target. <laughs> no. Don't, don't set a target, or oh, I'm going to watch all of that by the next Vanity Fair. <laughs> but it'd be interesting to see how much of that you do watch by the, by the next Vanity Fair. I reckon it would probably still be zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Because that list is probably going to keep building. Yeah. As they release more stuff. So you'll just yeah. keep adding it to your list and then it'll make, it'll put even more pressure yeah, yeah, yeah. on you. Yeah. The only That's thing insane. I've managed to keep up with, I think, is the movies. Like, I've, I'm actually up to date with the, the movies in terms of. Hey, listen, you watched Predator as well. So you went off piece and you watched Predator. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Maximum yeah. respect to you, Dom. Yeah. And I enjoyed it. And, and you enjoyed it. Yeah, and I mean, like you know, I'm gonna we're gonna be doing Dom's old movie reviews going forward, aren't we? In some of these yeah, we podcasts, are. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we just have to check. We need to get our guests to suggest a movie that they've watched that I need to watch. Um, except for when Fiona returns on the podcast because she hasn't watched a single movie in life. <laughs> she got quite defensive about that when you said it last time, <laughs> yeah. didn't she? Oh, I've watched I films. Like, yeah, you've watched about four films, Fiona, in your whole life. We love you. Please come back on our We love you, but you've only watched four films. <laughs> um, the <laughs> other bit, I think, as well, I don't know if we want to go into this, but it's the obviously we've got the actor strikes happening in at the moment. Um, <sighs> yeah. What? <laughs> just... Well, the thing is, okay, you're going to have to bring me up to speed because this is the reason why I don't know about what exactly what's going on there is part of one of the answers to my to the other questions. So what what's the background to that? What's going on? So what currently striking? all actors are currently striking because they on based on pay, healthcare and a few other things. So the union is called the SAG um, SAG. Um that's spinach, Indian. SAG Island. I don't know. Just that. with two A's. <laughs> just interesting fact Sag-Ala. there. SAG Island. <laughs> Is yeah. that just a hashtag just saying? That's a hashtag just saying. That's when you go to a restaurant and you say, oh, I'll have a, I'll have a chicken korma, chicken madras, sargalu. Oh, was that oh, the do. actors <laughs> union or? No, no, no. That's spinach and potato. Um, Sorry. But the, the problem with it is that most most people see people like Florence Pugh, Matt Damon, Matt Damon, Matt Damon. Um, Emily Blunt, right, going, yeah, I'm going on strike now. And, they, and you look at them, yeah, but you, and they're like, yeah, but you earn millions and millions of pounds. Like, why are you going, strike, going on strike based on that? But you forget that the acting industry, like those people at the top level movies are like the top 1%. Um, yeah, if that. So, so things like that. And so the, the stat that I saw is one of the actors... Or actresses. Is there a gender neutral term for an actor slash actress? I think just actor. I think it's actor, yeah. Is it actor? Okay. But anyway, they they broke down. So um, Orange is the New Black is, um, you know, fairly, was a really popular, 
yeah, Netflix from way back. Yeah. streaming things. Um, she got paid eight dollars per episode. See, that's disgusting. So, so I know, I know, there's been a gender pay gap in in Hollywood pay. So, so a list yeah, well. male yeah. actors get paid way more than female, and it's, yeah. that, it's just disgusting. It's just yeah, but yeah, but even so, right? So, and she $8 says that she an eight dollars an episode. So she earns something like. I think she said allowed something like fifty six dollars in total, something ridiculous like that. That is disgusting. And Whoa. and you think the amount of money that Netflix makes, um, and then the stat this morning was Netflix would need to give up, not even uh, not one percent, not even one percent, point two five eight percent of their revenue to pay actors for, uh, to pay actors and actresses fairly. Oh, you see, you see, this this leads neatly onto another point further on in that list. But yes, and, uh, that's and, interesting. And and it's not just pay. Obviously, it's you know, of, you know America has this crazy healthcare system, which I yeah. just I can't fathom. Like I, I I have a lot of criticism for the NH for the way that the NHS is being run. But that's our government. But I think the NHS is the single greatest thing that you know we've come up with. The Amen. fact that especially in the last two weeks for me, is the fact that I can wander into a hospital and go, I'm really sick, help. And somebody will go, okay, here you go. And it's like, brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. And I don't have it's to, and I, and, and I don't get a bill through the post that is 96,000 pounds or, you know, whatever it is, quarter of a million. It, you know, how much is having a baby, right? So you've, you've had a child, Jerry. How much did it cost you at the hospital to have that child? Nothing. Nothing. Average cost is fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. What? To have a child. Yes. And that's assuming it goes well. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, God right? forbid if there are complications and then uh, But you know, it, obviously they want uh, generally, the way that they do it is um, company. The company that you work for provides some sort of health insurance, and what they're saying is a lot of actors and actresses don't um, get health insurance when they work for when they work as an actor because you're almost like a freelance, so to speak. Hmm. Um, and then yeah, yeah then yeah, then you've got the greed of the male actors, where like, and this was actually from Emily. I think it was Emily Blunt. She did an interview about this, and she said. No, no, it wasn't Emily Blunt. It was it was another actress, but I can't remember, can't think who it was. But um, Saoirse Rosen was was there in the room, right with her because I remember seeing her um, uh, reaction, and um, she said that she got offered a job role but wasn't told the salary because she they qu- quote she said. I they need to wait until they've got the male lead and how much they're going to pay him to see how much budget they will have to pay her. And I was like, wait, what the fringe? How does that actually work? That that doesn't make sense. If they're an equal lead, you pay them the same. So you so get the bad. salary, you get your budget, and you divide it in two. So bad in this day and age, it's just pathetic. Oh yeah, madness. <sighs> Absolute madness. Really, okay, this really pisses me off. <laughs> That's disgusting. Eight dollars an episode. Seriously, somebody should $8. be fired for that. Yeah, somebody should be fired for for allowing that to happen. That's it's, disgusting. It's, it's all greed. It's all shareholders yep. and and all bits and pieces like that. So, well, yeah, yeah. I'll come to that. <laughs> I'll come to that. We'll come to that. I think we've we've yeah. got loads of other points. Yeah, and I'm conscious that we're like what we're three questions in. <laughs> we've been recording for a while. What, Forty-three questions, I think. Totally. <laughs> this could be a long podcast, but I think could it's going to be a very good one. Right, let's go on to let's go on to a bit more jovial stuff, or a little bit at least a little bit more interesting stuff in terms of, uh, and we'll come back to all the despicable stuff. So, um, last year we did. Well, the first year we predicted how many subscribers we or we how many subscribers we wanted, and we said how many subscribers do we have? Subscribers do we have now? And I mean, Jerry, you can read them out if you want. Go for it. So just read what's in the right hand column there. Yeah, go for it. Right. So we've got thirty six subscribers on YouTube, seventy four individual listeners on Spotify, and twenty seven Spotify followers. Which 
I think I've worked it out as an average of about 96%. No, not quite that high. 80, sorry, 84% from last year. That's amazing. Which is a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Like, I didn't think we'd had that much growth. But when I, the subscribers on YouTube was really the one that got me. Because I was like, I don't know. What's that? 15 people that could have subscribed. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Because there's a big difference. Between, I, know, I don't know how many listeners we've got on YouTube. But it's one thing to listen and another thing to subscribe. So the, the number of subscribers is probably proportionately a lot lower than the number then of people listeners that, i'm assuming yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's incredible yes. 36 yeah. subscribers yeah but but it's, it was it was the 15 increase where i was like i don't i can't think of 15 people that i've told and gone go and listen to this um well i okay so i have been <laughs> plugging it quite quite shamelessly for the last definitely in the last nine months <laughs> Hashtag just saying. But some of them, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, I know. I, I hear your point. You're right. Yeah. Who, who are those? Because it doesn't tell you, does it? It just, all it will say, when you go to look at the stats, it just says, these are the subscribers, but it doesn't tell you who the subscribers are. I'm yeah, a lot of people on these days have their, you know, have it hidden on YouTube. Oh, so isn't it? Yeah. I can't okay. tell. I just get a number. I can think I can see about three subscribers who are actually open that say oh yeah this right. is this is who it is and i know a few of them based on comments that they've left and things like that um but also the people that you're plugging it to could also be spotify followers yeah i think the majority of, of which is 11 yeah so why would they be a spotify follower and a youtube subscriber they so wouldn't that's, be they wouldn't that's be really, potentially would up to 27 <sighs> additional right. people there so now you th- now i'm like well hang on a minute like and I, I can't see I can't see the Apple or the um Amazon. Amazon. Google or the Amazon yeah. stats. Okay. Well we're starting to get traction. As I <laughs> as I put in my question in there, Dom, is when are we doing our world tour? Oh my god. I mean I would love to do that. I'd love to go to so a place, cool, find a guest and go to a guest's place, set it up, record a podcast. That would be great. That's on the list. It's definitely on the list. Nice. Um, but I'm gonna. This is this is the other bit, right? So, um, we have 640 streams of our podcast just on Spotify. Oh wow! So that means what? that somebody that means that somebody has listened to at least half an hour of a podcast episode. Wow! Wow! And that's individual, so it's not the same. Yeah, it's person. not the same. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's where you suddenly that's... go, hang on a minute. <laughs> that's bigger than I thought it was going to be. This is exciting, Dom. Um, we have 4.8 thousand views on YouTube in total now. Um, so when you think that, so that's been quite helped by the short form content yeah, that we've co- kind of yeah, started so that to do as well. All those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially... Um, one of Yevgeny's one got like 1.2 thousand just on one thing, but the others are now sort of picking up traction and getting like, are in the hundreds consistently, which, you know, most people that kind of go on YouTube think, oh yeah, but I'm used to people with millions of subscribers. Like to us, this is like, wow, we're actually, you know, people are actually watching this and, oh, and this viewing it. This is so it. good. Um, so my question to you, um, what is our most watched podcast on YouTube? I'm going to go for the obvious and say Yevgeny's. It is correct. Yeah. Um, what is the most listened to podcast on Spotify? And it is not Yevgeny's. I don't. <laughs> I was going to go. <laughs> I'm also going to go for the most obvious one. Okay, so that's it has, I'll not... give you a clue. It has a guest on it. And it's from I... this year. Is it the one with hoops? No, I think it's the one with uh, no, no, no. I I think it's with um, with Adam. Yes, yes. Adam's. Swannies has got the, the, is the is the most played by a long way as well. Actually, 
on Spotify is massively ahead. It's got nearly like it's got nearly eight hundred starts and something like it's got like four hundred of our you know individual like half wow. an hour streams. Which is, I think that might be like a, the Taekwondo community bit that we've got. Must, like specific people, are like I've specifically advertised that one to the Taekwondo community because I thought it was a really good way to showcase a little bit about Swanee and our like bits yeah. and pieces. But hope I know some of the Taekwondo community have gone and listened to other podcasts now. So yeah, but that's our most played on. You see, um, I got feedback from two friends on that episode where they said, "Oh, I loved listening to that because I've always wanted to ask those sorts of questions." The sort yeah. of questions that I was asking you and, and, and Adam. So, yeah. 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 And oh, wow. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, and, you know, Adam, we will be asking you to come back on the podcast. At Definitely. Some point, <laughs> but, you, but it'll be next year because we're booked. We're booked until then. <laughs> Honestly, but, but what's going to be fascinating now is to see what, what those figures look like at the next Vanity Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It, do, I, it might depend on how much you plug it, like how much the thing, but we, you know, we've got like spoiler alert for the listeners here. We're going to have Yevgeny coming back on. So we've got some really hard hitting, hitting topics to come in on there. Um, we've got one of our work colleagues on who I think is going to have some amazing, not necessarily PR friendly stories, which I think, well, I think both me and you, Jerry, will probably be blown away with what he has to say. Yeah, he's, um, he's had a, yeah, his, he's had a crazy life. Um, um then we we've got an experiment with like having more than one guest on at a time yeah. um and you know ho- hoops is going to come back on as well hoops. so which is always a which is always a hoops. good good laugh it's one of our you know those are always our funniest podcasts uh so we'll be able to you know really at that point be able to come up with some topics and some stuff to do that hopefully will just catapult it i've got an idea which i want to pitch to you but i'm not going to do it now so i'll do, we'll do it <laughs> offline but I have got an idea. So something we can actually mention each podcast. And, and do you know what? It might lead to something. Love it. Which will obviously... So it, it, it might lead to something which will then really help our podcast if if it ever does get picked up. But I'm going to pitch the idea to you offline. And then and then we can we can do it. If you, if you think it's a good idea. Where's the stamp in this one? <laughs> yeah, this is... So, what yeah, I'm quite it? excited about it. But I thought, no, <laughs> should I bring it up now? No, 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 no. But you sort of t- <laughs> something you touched upon the, earlier, so it's related to that. Uh, I'll I'll pick up. <laughs> I'm offline. writing it down, folks. I'm writing yeah, it down. Cool. Um, and it's interesting. Like, so the next question is like, what do you think the goal for subscribers to be? And and I have to admit, I, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't have a goal. I just want to. I wanna, don't either. I think I mentioned oh. this in last year's one was the whole the Robin Williams thing. Um, like, I just want to cause people to have a smile on it on their faces that's what um, makes it worthwhile for me when somebody says says to me i listen to your podcast by the way i was laughing out loud i was mm. crying laughing yeah you know, I, I hear that and think yeah that's that's the goal ticked job yeah. done for me in terms of a yeah. goal um i haven't and, got a goal on numbers or anything just want to make people laugh and and i think i said that some of the feedback had dropped off but i think i'm getting more feedback now from people on different bits but what i find is people surprise me with feedback because yeah. they're like uh so somebody came up to me at a taekwondo event and asked me how my elbows were which is from like the first podcast <laughs> yeah. that we did and i was like uh, there was a brief moment I was like, where are we going with what? this i'm very confused but it, you know it was like oh actually yeah I and mean, what did you think of this and what did you think of that and this is a really interesting point that you made and i'm really enjoying that so yeah not like please listeners and and everybody please give us feedback um like as well as kind of doing the, I hope that we've put a smile on somebody's face, whether that's the guest that we have on, whether that's somebody that's listening to, whether that's the sunlight that's just come in, that's blimey, that was bright. Um, it, it, you know, that's what it does. But also I like, I like hearing people tell me I'm wrong. My opinion is wrong. I like having that discussion. If somebody goes to me, what are you ridiculous? Pineapple on pizza is the best thing ever, which you know, it's called Marmite, banana and peanut butter in oh. a wrap. <laughs> or walnuts and what was it? Walnuts oh, and walnuts, and blue rocket, and... blue cheese. So rocket and blue cheese, totally. 
I just don't it's like the walnuts. walnuts. It's the walnuts that gets me on that. I one. had a date and walnut cake, which is so nice. But as I was eating it the other day, I thought this would be so nice without the walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> just make it a you date s- cake. <laughs> What's funny is it, it kind of glitched a little bit like that. And the way it came across, it said it sounded like you had a date with a walnut cake <laughs> rather than a date. I did. And, and, and it went cake. really well, actually. <laughs> Um, apparently we're meeting up again next Saturday, which is nice. Uh, does does Chloe uh, know about this one? <laughs> no, I haven't told her yet. Oh dear. Have a date with a date. Yeah. Um, I'd written in my notes here. We'd, we'd, I think we smashed the goals with hopefully um, people enjoy. Yeah, it. I think Although we I... have definitely. And we enjoy it, and that's the most important thing. Love it. it. <laughs> Love it. I've just really tickled myself with that date with a woman. I don't know why. <laughs> Honestly, folks, I don't know what's happened to me today. I just, I've just lost the plot, and I've had such a rough two weeks. Like, if I'm open and honest, like if I'm being open and honest, I've had such a rough two weeks that I was genuinely worried at one point. I was like, "Am I going to be well enough to do this podcast?" And then the last like 48 hours, I've properly like I've come around, and I and Jerry you said look to me before, so much better. I look so much better yeah, than I did really on Wednesday. Do. Um, and part of me was a little bit nervous of, of, of like doing it, but the podcast, cause I, I felt rusty. I felt sick. And I was like, Oh, what's this going to be like? How am I going to do this? Am I going to talk too much? Cause I've got some stuff I want to rant about, which is just standard for me to talk too much. But what was, what's, but what's really interesting is I've just come onto the podcast and I'm just like, Oh, actually like we've talked about making other people laugh and stuff like that. But there are times where I just sit and I'm just, I'm going, I'm just having a chat with one of my best mates. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, I'm having a right go. good laugh with that. And um, it comes up with a, a little bit of a Russell Howard quote where he, so he's interviewing, um, is it Greta Thunberg is her name, I yeah, think, yeah. isn't it? Right. And he causes her to snort laugh, right? And he's live on television and he goes, that's brilliant. You know, when somebody is having a good time, when they, when they do that, because you don't want to be making noises like that on public television, really, do you? <laughs> right. And, and it's true. Like there are times where I've looked back at the podcast and I've gone, should I edit the fact that me and Jerry are just laughing for about four minutes? No, and then, not. then I get feedback from usually Samwise going, you got me a load of weird looks because I was laughing at you laughing. And and that's what it is. It's like the subreddit contagious laughter. Like that's what I hope that we do. And if it's just the fact that me and Jerry get to talk absolute balmy nonsense, make each other laugh and enjoy it. And if other people just happen to enjoy it, then that's 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 me. I'm done. I'm I'm a happy man. Amen. That's the second amen I've said in this podcast. <laughs> Getting you all religious with this one. I am. Getting you all religious. One thing I have noticed is I, I have a terrible habit of drinking all the time when I'm on this <laughs> yeah, podcast. You but... You've already had about three litres of water. I don't know where you're storing it all. Well, I now have like a little full litre bottle of water. So I've done I've done fa- fairly well. Um, but it is also like fairly warm in my... <laughs> it's <laughs> always warm. Even in the dead of winter. It's like, I don't yeah, think it ever fair. drops below 24 point... What is that at the moment? It was 24.2. Oh, there you go. I don't think it's ever dropped be- below 24... Oh, it has. Even in the dead think, of winter. I think, what, to 23? I've, no, the lowest I've seen it is 18. Still not bad. But I've been in my parents' house and you can't, you kind of, you know, you, when you breathe and you can see your breath, you're like, it's cold. No, actually, it was when I was, I was in Newcastle, I was um, visiting Laura. And that, this was, that, this was last year in like November, December time, early late November, December time when it was freezing and nobody could afford anything because it because gas and electric had gone up. So Laura was trying to save money and she apparently doesn't feel the cold. And I do remember being like wrapped in, going, like with my head poked out the duvet going, yeah, I can see my breath. <laughs> it must be like Wait. four degrees. It was freezing. Whoa. Absolutely freezing. Whoa. Um, but I'm a man that enjoys the heat. So. It's a good job being in your flat. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 definitely the one. <laughs> uh, describe our podcast in the next year. Um, Tough one. I just 
would like to keep doing what we're doing. I love the fact that we're getting more guests. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to actually just get different views, people's different views. And I, and, and I think our um, last podcast with Fiona was great where you suddenly realize, oh, actually Fiona's got shed loads of stories to, that she's, she could tell us. And so, yeah, as you said about, we've got the guest coming up. He's, he's led a very, very interesting life. He's, he's, yeah, he's done some crazy stuff. Mm. Um, so to hear all of those stories, I, I love it. I just like learning more about people. So um, I think just keep doing what we're doing um, because it's bringing different perspectives and things into into this podcast as well. I think we've got a right balance as well of humour and yeah, yeah. D- distinctness and joviality. That's why we so, called it what we did. Exactly. What, it's interesting, isn't it? Because this year... I would say we've had in the three guests, the three most recent guests, sorry, three of the guests that we've had, because we've had four guests this year. So we've had Hooper on twice, Yevgeny, Adam and Fiona. And I would say Yevgeny's was guest driven. So Yevgeny wrote the notes for us and mm. like, and like wrote a load of stuff that he wanted us to go through. And, you know, we did some of the normal stuff that we do with guests, like what's your favorite meal deal and things like that. Um, Adams was 50, 50. So he had a really poignant life event that we wanted to discuss about, you know, his changing job. And, and it was a good opportunity, Jerry, for you to talk about your changing job, which I, I think is what comes up to your like lack of stress this year. I, I, did, I, f- I forgot that this year was the year that you changed your job and made a real big difference to your work-life balance and things like that. And then Fiona's was kind of us-led, if that makes sense. It was kind of podcast-led. Yeah. Like yeah. the whole thing was us and it wasn't... and. It's not that it's a bad podcast in any way, shape or form. And it's not Fiona's fault. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. But what I felt like is it's like, mm, I th- felt like the conversation was too structured. And I love the fact that your first line that you put in the notes is free flowing. Mm-hmm. And I think that Fiona's was just wasn't quite as free flowing as... Um, I would have liked, I felt like I put, we put, I put, too, and, and I do most of the notes. I felt like I put a bit too much structure in. I was like, oh, when I kind of reflect back on it, I would have quite liked to have just gone into like stories for Fiona to tell type, type thing and, and bits and pieces and would have. Yeah, but we're going to get her back. Yes. We've already agreed that she wants oh, to come absolutely. back. She can't wait to come back. And we, we can't wait to have her back. So we'll, we'll yeah, and we'll do a free flowing one then. But at least we've got, got her views on, on the different food items and, yeah. Now we know what our favorite meal deal is and go to pizza exactly. something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, though walnuts. Um and and that's what I think like that's what I think is where our podcast has transformed, like we've where we've got better. Yeah. I think in the first year when we made the transition, the first year we made the transition from audio to video and audio, and the second year we did guests, like and I'm proper guests. We did have Laura in the first year. Um, and that's not to say she's not a proper guest. It it was an audio based one, and again, it was very podcast driven. It was very you know it was poignant questions, which we haven't done poignant questions for ages yeah, we because we haven't felt that we've needed to them. I've got mm. I've got hundreds of them in the background to do, um, but yeah. Whereas now we've gone from this like what I feel like entertainment of just me and Jerry talking about like guided conversation to let's find out about normal people with a bit of guided conversation, I think is a really, is where our podcast has kind of changed in the last um, like year, especially. Yeah, I agree. I, we have to, I like the fact that we've reacted and we've evolved. So we've reacted Mm. to things, things that have worked well, things that haven't, worked as well and we've evolved as a result of it i think that's that's all part of the the fine tuning isn't it you've got to start somewhere right so and and we did so we started with a structure and then we've tried different things and gone oh that that worked really well um 
Like I say, I've got a couple of ideas. One of them, which I'm, I'm just itching to tell you about it. Yeah, yeah. But... I, I kind of almost want to end the podcast and know what it is. <laughs> yeah, just to, to redial back in. Yeah, I will tell you just at the end. I promise. Pause the recording. Yeah, and then no. reopen the recording. Yeah, and then... Oh no, something will break. I'm pretty sure. If we do yeah, that. no, you don't want to tempt um... fate, especially with my technology. I, I will tell <laughs> you. Mine. I will tell you at the end. I promise. Yeah. No, I th- and I think that's really good. I think that's what's really good about the the podcast is that we. I, I, I've simply put in my notes um, like two, two, two things that I, I think I've learned a lot from this podcast more than I thought I would like a, an awful lot, uh, especially in how I articulate, conduct, write up notes, come up with ideas and, you know, become creative. Um, and then also the other bit is I, you know, like I said, I would love to do an in-person podcast, uh, you know, there's a little yes. bit of logistics and 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 things to to kind of really solve, um, and that's whether it's like do I, you know is that going to have to wait till I've bought a house or is or, you know do we look at just hiring a studio and doing something like you know just just doing it out there and just seeing what it's like. But then the other bit I think as well is we've just got so many guests lined up just even in the next six months that it's going to challenge us in a different way. And is it going to, you know, and we've got to make sure that we keep that distinct and jovial authenticity of us two while also yeah. bringing these guests yeah. on and, and going, or oh, do we need to just have an a, a odd episode where it's just us two and go back to a bit of our roots and, and bits and pieces like that. So it's, it's, it's going to be a real, it's an adventure. It's a journey. And I'm kind of excited to bring people in. Like yeah. So, yeah. Just don't add it to your to-do list. If you add it to your to-do <laughs> list, Right, the podcast is on my to-do list. No, no, <laughs> it's it going to put too much pressure, is it? it okay, is. yeah, it is. <laughs> um, right, let's go on to some more light-hearted questions for a little bit before we come back to like some real hard-hitting stuff. And probably, oh, blind. we're not even halfway through. Bloody Nora, Jerry. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, you're yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. So we've got we've we've got seven left, and we've done one, two, three, four, five. We've done six. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll have to be a bit quick fire on this one. Yeah, go Let's for it. Let's do it. Right, first thing you think, the first thing you did when you woke up this morning, fed the giant douche and the turd sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> then I made myself. <laughs> I suppose this is a little bit different because actually it's it's well it's now quarter to twelve, but we did this we yeah. started this at ten o'clock this morning, so yeah. You know, it's an early podcast. Normally, we would normally we used to record this on a Friday, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. But we we recorded that, and we would end up. So it would be what's your pre work routine? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love right. that. I love it. Just don't do some of the third sandwich, and, and then, then made myself coffee. coffee. Yeah, which I desperately needed. <laughs> what about you? Uh, honestly, I just got out of bed and I had a shower and browsed a little bit of the internet, wrote up some more notes for this, and then cracked on with this. Like, nice. I, I, and my routine, I have to admit, like I was, this was the point where I had a rant about social media and ADHD and all the environmental factors about it. I've tried to cut my social media use. Interestingly, by my phone, my phone sits in the living room when I'm in bed, and it sits in my bedroom when I'm <laughs> when I'm in in here okay. um, so it's like it's just the opposite end of the flat to where i am so you'll basically. never see dom and his phone in the same room at the yeah, same well time. it is here it is here this time <laughs> at the moment but that's purely because if we have technical difficulties i know that you might <laughs> yeah, need to exactly. ring me <laughs> <laughs> i know because i this yesterday morning i posted the short that's got me on the phone here while yeah. me and fiona can see you perfectly <laughs> and you're going i haven't seen oh, that oh no <laughs> no bloody internet bloody technology so yes yeah let's not go into a rant about like proper no no i don't think our morning routines are going to change that much more no whether it's get up and go to the gym or whether it's get up and go to work like (laughs) yeah no fine nothing's gonna change uh uh, this might be one that i take out next year but technology that blows your mind this year still (laughs) (laughs) wi-fi Yeah, I suppose for me, it's how your Wi-Fi still is. <laughs> well, the whole concept of Wi-Fi, though, the st- the fact that and I still can't get my head round. Um, I can, I don't know, download an ebook, and that whole ebook 
flies through the air, goes <laughs> into my laptop, and then I can send that whole ebook to a printer, and all of that data just goes through the air to the printer, <laughs> and then the printer prints it off, and that's still I know it's just... <laughs> Oh, my simple brain. It still fries my mind. My mind, when I really try and think about it, just turns into a bacon frazzle, but... <laughs> Wi-Fi. Not a, t- not a tasty kind, either. No, I don't know. Bacon's bacon. All bacon's good. Um, it's a bacon frazzle, though, isn't is a crisp. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I love bacon frazzles, but you eat a pack of bacon frazzles, you're going to be burping bacon for the next three days. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So yeah, why that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna actually be my first risky food today. Or bacon frazzle. Um, or bacon. 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 It's my first risky food. Um so just for full context, I am currently recovering from I assume norovirus or some kind of stomach flu, which I had a week and a half ago. So yeah, I've uh, I've lost the good good news, everybody, I've managed to lose four kilos in a week. There you go. All well, thanks to Nora. It's so- a virus. <laughs> So, so I am like I'm, I'm nearly my goal weight that I wanted to be for my grading. I just did it in a week before I started my high intensity training. I t- I still want to know who Nora is. I don't know. Sorry, somebody will know. <laughs> Nora. The thing is, now all I've got is Nora Batty from uh, <laughs> yeah. last, last of the summer, summer wine. wine. <laughs> And somebody's going to go, how do you know that, Dom? And I said, because that was my dad's favourite television program go. when I grew up. Laura Batty virus. Uh, oh, dear. So you um, put AI, Dom? Yes. So at the risk of... <laughs> at the risk of maybe sounding too obvious, but why AI? I... It doesn't blow my mind in terms of, like, its concept. Like, I get AI. I get artificial intelligence. Um even if intelligence is normally the thing that I lack. But the thing that blows my mind from it is partially how scary it's becoming and also how easy it is to just kind of like dupe people. Like, so interestingly, it's actually Hooper that I think is the worst culprit for this because so within Photoshop, there is this new AI feature. Right, that you can in you Photoshop, can get it to, really in Photoshop, yeah. But and it, by the way, it's it's freaking brilliant. It makes it's like the last because I've got it enabled on Photoshop for when I do the thumbnails, and the last two thumbnails I've used it, and it's it's so good. But um, oh if God. if you want to go and like see somebody do it, go on to Hooper's Instagram uh, channel, ninety two plates, and if you scroll down to one of his reels. He's basically, he's got like a milkshake. He's taken a photo of a milkshake. He's a really good photographer. That's, that's Hooper's thing. He's a food photographer. Um, and he's taken a photo of a bottle of milkshake and he wants to make it more artistic. And so he uses the AI feature to then like draw a ring around it. And he literally types in add chocolate squares. And the AI then comes along and like it will add and it will detect like, you know, the where the light source is coming from and add like literal chocolate squares that look like they were planted there as part of the photo and then hooper's done um like a whole instagram story where you can vote like ai or real and he put something like 12 pictures and was like ai or real ai or real ai or real and uh, like something like nine out of the 12 i think are ai but it's like if you initially looked at them you're like don't know really difficult to tell not 100 percent sure and the yeah to some of the pictures that it's producing are just insane um and then you also go back onto the netflix thing so um the oh, netflix were in your yeah nose. netflix were asking like extras to come in and act for a day and then they would then use their image as part of ai to then be able to you know do what they want for significantly cheaper which by the way i think is a very easy way to solve this your copyright is you if an ai or a business uses your image in as as part of ai right they should pay you didn't netflix do an episode of this 
in, or, or there was sorry, I don't know if it's produced it by the Netflix. Black Mirror. Black Mirror, yeah. yeah. I, I watched Which I think that Black Mirror Netflix episode. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, so when I say what technology blows my mind, it's not that it blows my mind from a conceptual thing. It's just a what it can do, uh, and what it can, yeah, where the dangerous things that it could, you know, it could. Ah, oh, this is one for a separate conversation. That's kind of worrying. If you think of just those non-sinister mm. examples that you've just given, where it, like you can't even tell the difference between I'm not saying yeah. you, as in you, as in the royal news and us generally, like you have a look at twelve photos and you, it's like you have to try and guess which one's real and which one's AI. That's that's it's that's it's kind proper of difficult. Yeah, and you know, there's all kinds of things when AI can develop videos and they can develop. You know, they can take a voice. People are taking singers' voices and getting them to sing other songs. So I think it was um, somebody took Frank Sinatra's voice and AI'd it to sing Old MacDonald Had a Farm. And it sounds exactly like Frank Sinatra would sing it in his style and things like that. And it's like... Okay. So, yeah, that's what blows my mind about that's AI. Worrying. Okay. Very worrying, very scary. Ooh. Very scary. So yeah, and and there are benefits, I will say. So I think I got sent um a job it wasn't a job description, it was like a job kind of like thing on LinkedIn. It's very difficult to know whether they're real or real or not real on LinkedIn sometimes. I don't know why, I just never trust things. But what I find interesting um, so a startup company has made an AI to, to remove the administrative tasks from within health service, whether that's the NHS or whatever. Um, and they were looking for developers to help develop the, the technology to do that. That's a positive thing from AI because mm. there are times where like anything repetitive that doesn't need to be done by a specialist, that specialist could be freed up to actually do like their job, I think is great. You know, I have to admit, there's a couple of times where AI could be introduced into the job that I do and half of my admin work would disappear and it would be fantastic. And then I could actually, like, you know, what could I then achieve instead? It mm. would be amazing. So, yeah, there are positives, but at the moment, there's a lot of like, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work. What's the space? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, if you get Hooper on again, we'll have to... We'll yeah, I think we it. might need a yeah, we might need a demo. Yeah, yeah, we'll get him to share a screen again. And That'd be good. Go through that. That'd be good. Right, I'm going to skip the next question and come back to it. Okay, because it's going to be a lot longer, I think, than the other ones. Okay, because there's, I think, I want to do the next the question below it. Yeah, just the next question below it. Okay, um, and then come back to it because I think it'll be interesting to to carry on so where would you like to visit next year i would love to go back to mallorca i know it's really boring but i'd love to go back to mallorca i just love that island was that your holiday that you went and did nothing for a week wasn't it last year in sort of september last year uh in september i can't remember was it then no i'm trying to so last year last year we went to madeira oh yes of course it was yeah and that was for two weeks. And that was one of the most stressful holidays I've ever had. Because <laughs> everyone was ill. Everyone was ill. Every, everything that went, could go wrong went wrong. And driving around the island of Madeira is not for the faint-hearted. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Mallorca was a while back. But I, I, I just keep thinking about Mallorca. I, I fell in love with that island. Beautiful. Mm. I love the capital palmer as well uh, it's just mm. i just love everything about mallorca yeah so that's what i'm gonna go back i i've realized i have no trips planned between this vanity fair and next vanity fair because my next big trip is not till november next year and that's to south korea ah uh, no argentina oh argentina of course yes 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 yeah, that'd be amazing. I've got nothing Argentina, planned. that'd be amazing. I'm very much looking forward to that one. I'm also a little bit apprehensive about that. Why? 
because I don't know. I just, it's a long way. And, and it's one of those things where it's a bit like, Oh, I'm not sure what, you know, I'm British going to Argentina. That's quite a risky thing to a certain extent. You're going to have the best steak. I'll tell you that. Yes. You're going to have the best steak ever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, that that I'm looking forward to, and it's going to be a, you know there's a taekwondo tournament, and um, taekwondo is Argentina's second national sport after football. Uh, I want to say football for the American listeners, soccer. So- um, yeah, it's uh, and that's traditional taekwondo, not Olympic style ta- taekwondo. It's it's huge. So normally at our taekwondo tournaments, the spectators are parents or all of us that are doing the tournament, but this one there will be general admission for public to come and watch it enjoy amazing they reckon there's going to be 2500 competitors which is i'm there's the biggest one that i've done was slovenia which was 1500 competitors so you're looking at another thousand people on top and they've already extended the tournament by two days so i'm excited um, yeah it'll don't be nervous that'd be amazing i want to hear all about that yeah, I'm expecting my category to have like 200 people in it. Incredible. <laughs> it's just gonna be, it's gonna be just big. So be good, be good fun. Fantastic. But um, yeah, but I would have done another. We would have done another Vanity Fair before yeah. I get there. That's the that's the weird thing about Bonkers. it. Bonkers. November, did you say? November. November 2024. Um, so I need to find out what I'm going to do on my holiday next year. But I will need two weeks for that, so I might not have as much uh, holiday. It'd be so, incredible. Uh, Right, we're on to, like, I call them the harder-hitting questions, um, which is, like, what's most important to you right now? Uh, If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Um, And then what do we want to... And are we better or worse than last year? And then what do we want to accomplish on the podcast in the next year? And I think the accomplish on the podcast one, we can very quickly have done that. Like, it's going to be guests, Mm. guests, guests, and an in-person podcast. That's our next year, I think, isn't it? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I don't think we need to go into that. I think we're no, we've like, already covered it. Really, we, we have to... actually covered it. Yeah. yeah. Apart from the the bit where I put, um, would also love to do an in person podcast, and then I went to do the smiley face, which is the colon and the bracket. Yeah. And what I loved was the fact that my Mac just came up with the or or the on the. <laughs> it's not to do with the back actually. It's to do with the notes, and it just said, hmm, slightly, <laughs> slightly <laughs> smiley face, right. How smiley do you want me to get? I can't go any more smiley than a colon <laughs> and a bracket. Don't give me the slightly smiley. Oh, no, it's colon and smiley. a colon and a capital D. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm gonna try that out. Yeah, smile. <laughs> I'll be damned. No way. Okay, I'll get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Dom. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm all right. You're marvelling at my technical prowess. I'm, I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure that I've gone through all the notes that I've done now as well. Uh, oh, like, honestly, I've just realised, like, we've been recording for an hour and 50 minutes, and I've got so many notes for this podcast. This podcast could easily be four hours. Um, I've not talked, like, I've just listened to what we talked about last time. I've not talked about my Florida trip, which was a disaster. I've not talked about my, my YouTube channel that oh I killed off. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh what, what's the one? What do we want to accomplish? I don't think I did any notes for what I want to accomplish because it was just like guests. Get me the guests on. Um, and there was one phrase from last year's one about technology that blows your mind. And and <laughs> it, it's from you and you've just gone, it's all sizzle, no sausage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's all about sizzle these days. No one cares about the sausage anymore. It's just sizzle. And that that did just make me absolutely roar with laughter when I listened <laughs> to that back last night. So we'll go into the harder thing. What's important to you right now? And the most important question from last year, Jerry, is have you seen John Wick 4? I have. Not only have I seen John Wick 4, 
But I read something somewhere and went, oh, that's interesting, because somebody had put on some blog post, oh, you need to watch it right the way to the end. So get to the end of the, the end credits. Yeah. And there's a, another scene. Yes. Oh, end cred- there was an end credit scene. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So then I watched that as well. Mm. And they're making another one, apparently. Yes. Uh, I think they said there was going to be five in total. Oh, so, I I read somewhere that uh, Keanu Reeves said he he will keep making them as long as there's the demand there. So as, as long as fans keep demanding to see John Wick, he'll he'll keep filming them. Yeah. I think we mentioned this before when we said about television shows that sometimes it's nice for something to finish. So I'm going to say something controversial. Oh. Because I, I love John Wick and I, I love mm. that whole series. But I... You see, I loved the first one because I hadn't really seen anything like that before and thought, oh, that's amazing. Then the second one mm. I thought was really cool because then they started giving you more insight into the things behind the scenes around the high table and things. Yeah. The third one... I was like, okay. And I was hoping to get more of the um the backstory and you know, cuz the, the fighting and and the amazing choreography on all of that. It's 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 amazing, but we we have seen it, right? So you mm. don't really need 3 hours of that. You need I just want to learn a bit more yeah. about how the different the continentals work and the network of people and who's pulling the strings and how did it come about and why they're doing what they're doing and you know what what other people are involved in that world and you didn't really get any of that from four it was just insane fighting all the way and it did make me laugh because you know they're they're going off on one having all these fights in right near the next to the actually on the arc de triomphe and and at the at the sack of Kern, no police mm. <laughs> no police no it's a completely Paris has suddenly become completely lawless. There are no police yeah, anywhere. Yeah. No one's reporting any of the gunfire. <laughs> They're having a duel, absolutely, in one of the most iconic, in front of one of the most iconic pl- parts of Paris. But no one's sort of saying, "Oh, that's a bit alarming." <laughs> they just, alarm. they just, they can just get on with it. And I was just yeah. got to the end of it and thought, okay, if they're obviously going to be filming another one, if they film the next one. And it, it's just all, it's like, it's too samey then. I, I think mm. they've, I think with, with, with that part, that element of that storyline, they've squeezed, there's no more juice left in that orange. Stop squeezing no. the orange. Mm. Yeah. Let's pick another fruit. I, I, like, I, no, I agree. And I, it, it stems to my best thing. I like when things end. So, uh, you know, uh, the best one I can, the best, the best TV program I have ever watched, and I will stand by this until I die. There has not been another one. Um, it's actually a children's television program, um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. No, oh, you've mentioned this um, before. Yeah, yeah. Stand by it because it is. I've got to remember. I think it's three seasons. It's three seasons, but it is like twenty episodes per season because it's because of the way because it's children's program. It's twenty minutes. But it has, the entire thing has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, you know, it is, it, it flows. And, and it's a story that you can, under, you can watch and you can understand. And it has deep, meaningful sections. It has comedy sections. You get attached to the characters. And then they finish it. And, they, and, they, and, and that's it. And then they wanted, you know, they wanted to, go on that success. So rather than going, right, we'll bring back Ang, we'll just jump like 60 years and we'll just do a new avatar because they've built a universe that can be completely separate. They, they, can, they, they can harp back to a few new characters. So, you know, and what's brilliant is in the timescales that came out. So Av- Ang as the avatar, The Last Airbender, those three seasons came out when I was uh, probably about 12 so when I initially watched it, and and actually, the storylines for around then were appropriate for about a twelve-year-old. It does kind of give you a lot of morals and thought process. Bit there's a few bits that are a little bit, perhaps a little bit older generation, um, but it still holds up today. I think it's if you haven't watched it, it, is absolutely the best. I think the best television. And then they made a sequel, um, 
The Legend of Korra, which follows a different avatar, Korra. And that came out when I was 16. And the, I think the the life lessons from that are about the right for a 16 year old. It's a little bit more mature some of the for some other digs. It goes into a little bit more deeper around some certain elements. Um, but it's still got like enough that younger audiences can watch it and older audiences can watch it. And there's characters in both, but there's 60 years different. So the characters that were like, you know, 12, 13 in, in like in the first one are sort of 60s and stuff like that in the second one. And that's the point. Like you, you meet these old characters and you go, oh, yes, they're so and so. They aren't a core to the thing. So they're separate and they can do a whole new storyline. And there's rumors. So that the, the people that created it, they're going to create a third season, a third animated season. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Or series. I'm going to call it a series because actually Last Endbender has got three seasons in them. Yeah. 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 Right. But it can be completely separate. <clears throat> it can harp back to the other ones but it doesn't need to be directly linked and they can like almost like restart with a whole new bunch of characters and build a whole new story and sequence. And it can be an, a thing that you could watch independently. You could watch the other two independently, but it, but they are still linked. And that to me is how you build a universe. Not this kind of like, I agree. I think like John Wick, I think one and two are great. I think you could get rid of three and you could just do four. And I th- and then mm. end it, and it ends quite nicely in four. If you it haven't does. watched it, yeah. I th- and I th- and I'm like, end it like they could end it there, if they wanted to go and explore the origins. Like I love Keanu Reeves; I think he's brilliant. But you could just, you could bin off all the characters, and yeah. you could create a whole separate series yes. to explore the origins. That's like you could do I don't know two or three films, and they could be completely separate. Yeah, like you know, without ruining anything. And that's where I think when you said earlier about TV shows becoming boring, it's because they're like, oh, Marvel have done this massive universe. Everything must be connected and must be like truly linked. And I I still think at the moment that Marvel are starting to shoot themselves in the foot because of that. Like it's going to become harder and harder to do that. Whereas, you know, I like the fact that you've got the three Iron Man films that could be completely individualistic ish you know especially iron man one captain america especially one you could have iron man captain america and you could have never linked them they're just great characters mm. on their own and that sometimes i think is good enough agree so if i watch face off and um the, the, rock, uh, the rock yeah and con air this year yeah will you indulge me and watch avatar the last air spend- yeah i will i will yeah. Right. Where were we? What was I saying? Where right. We? Yes. So you. Uh, I think I heard. A, yes, you would watch Avatar. The yes, Last I'll Seven. watch. Yeah, I will definitely do that. If you watch The Rock, Face Off, and what was the third one you mentioned? The Rock, uh, Face off, off, and Connor. Connor. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the last bit. Those. Are, those are the rules that I. Those are the ones that I had. Um, cool. I'm just finding out what it is on. It's probably one of those ones you'll have to buy, I think. It used to be on Netflix. It is on Netflix still. Is it? Yeah. I'm just seeing if it'll actually load. Yes. Ow! Apparently Netflix are now doing autoplay. Um, yes, it is on Netflix. I don't know if nice. you, you still got Netflix? Or have you yeah, so I've still got Netflix. Yeah. yeah. So... And cool. do not watch the live action movie, please. The TV no, show. No, I've just I'm just Googling it and it's like that seems to be the main thing that's coming up. No. T V show. Okay. T V show. Yeah, okay. Right. So now we go on to the ser- super serious stuff. Because <laughs> I said we're going on super serious stuff, and then I was like, actually I need to ask you, did you watch you watch John yeah. Wick? <laughs> Um, what's the most important thing to you right now? And I think for both of us, we've done a full year that's been like, there's no other word for it. It's been freaking rough this year. Um, it's been difficult. It's been challenging for sure. A lot of what last year's conversation, this is going to probably let be less jovial, I think. Um, but a lot of the stuff last year we were complaining about was the cost of living. 
um because we've just come out of the petrol crisis uh obviously we'd spoken about the at that point the um russian invasion of ukraine was only in its like fourth month and it's now we're now in it's now in its 16th month february february march well march april may june july fifth yeah fifth fifth yeah, fifth, month, fifth, fifth month, month fifth yeah month, fifth month by the time this comes out it'll be closer to six and there's no other word for it like when i was listening to what we were saying i was like an absolutely call has changed except it's got worse yeah and that's that's more i uh, probably more in the question about do we think we're better or worse than we were last year um but in this specific bit like where we talk about what's the most important thing to us now i think i mean jerry you probably want to go into like your change of job and and what you've written down i think first yeah i for for me it was about eliminating the, the stress that i had so interestingly um in the role that i've got at the moment the one that i'm really enjoying i'm definitely busier than the role that I used to have because there's actually more physically that I have to do. Um, and I say physically, like inverted commas physically, but th there's more that I've got to do and juggle in this role, but it's less stressful because I'm not in a position of worrying about my role, worrying about the number of people that I have to look after. Um, it, 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 that, that burden, that comes with that kind of position mm. um, that's now gone. And that's, and then I realized just how much of an effect it was having on me. So it's nice to be away from that and just doing a job, you know, I get to the end of each day and go, Rob, that was a really good day's work. You know, it was great. Or, you know, even if it's frustrating, you kind of go, okay, that's fine, but then we'll, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Um, so it's, it's busier it's more intense but it's it's nowhere near as stressful mm. and that's made a big difference and i i i think what's what it's made me realize is that i've got to seek things out and and live my life according to okay what's going to be minimal stress for me yeah essentially yeah uh, or i mean we spoke about it earlier when we talked about the book but Make sure the problems that you have are solvable problems. You, in your previous role, yes. I think, had a lot of problems that you felt like were unsolvable. Yeah, they were out of my sphere of control. Or even sphere of influence. I tried to influence things. Mm. But, yeah. Where, my, my, de the, my destiny was not in my hands in my previous role. Mm. Whereas now, it, you feel, a, you know, you still have similar problems and stresses, but they're solvable or controllable or influenceable yeah yeah 100 yeah, um, so it's fun um i really love this this com this this one when i listened to me back last time and this is where i am going to be a little bit selfish on this podcast and talk a little bit a lot about me <laughs> right in this one and i think it's going to be good because because over the next few months like i said we've got six podcasts prepared with guests now, whether they all happen, whether the guests can make it or whatever, um, depends. But um, it's interesting. I've got to go on a journey. And I, I've mentioned that this year has been pretty rubbish. So um, last time I mentioned, I, I actually mentioned I had, they thought I had some subclinical virus, which is basically something that only appears when I do exercise. And that's the exact phrasing I went. And I laughed out loud at myself because... For those that don't know, and I think I've probably mentioned it on this podcast before, I didn't have a subclinical virus. I ended up having a liver, bladder, and kidney infection all at the same time, <laughs> right? And I went through two rounds of antibiotics to get rid of it all and to reclaim my health, right? So I said, like, reclaiming my health was the thing that I needed to do, and I tried to do that. And then since then, so those finished in the January of, last, of this year. Um, and since then, every holiday that I have come up to right so preparing for so in January I had the Dutch Open um bearing in mind I also lost all my fitness like I lost all my fitness and I do competitive taekwondo as my hobby and fitness is something I've always wanted so that's like a real big toll that took on my mental capacity last in the last year to kind of really go do you know what 
oh, I've got to do this all again. And when I say I've got to do this all again, it's like I've got to go over old ground and regain my fitness. And it's a really hard thing. And I'm not 18 years old anymore. It, it hasn't just sprung back. But now I've also got to deal with the fact that every trip that I came up to, I got sick. Right. So before the Dutch Open in January, I got the flu. And that was horrible. So I had like a week and a half in bed, which was just not fun. Coming up to then Florida, I had this like, I don't know where I got it, but this wave of nausea that was just insane to the point that I remember crawling out of my car at one point because I was just felt so sick. Um, and was interesting, like the day I traveled, I was fine. The day before I was on my hands and knees. The day I traveled, totally fine. Uh, and it was, and, and I had to really force myself to go. Like I was going to pull out of going to Florida. I pulled out of going to the Dutch Open because I was just too sick. Um, the Holland Cup this year, um, <laughs> apart from uh, the two weeks before I caught a cold and I thought, oh, okay, it's two weeks before, but I just never recovered. It took me two weeks. And even on the day, I was still like a bit like just before and like traveling was a little bit drugged up to kind of do it. Um, that was also including the fact my bloody flight was canceled on the Friday. So oh, I had yeah, to get up like, so we, our yeah. flight was supposed to be like 3 PM for the Holland cup uh, from Heathrow. They moved us to, um london city at 3 p.m and we went sod that but the only other flight was 8 a.m heathrow so we suddenly had to i had like three hours sleep traveled over there and then it ended up being an amazing trip while i was there but just never felt right just i like those two weeks i just never kind of felt what right and now i'm two weeks before my first week off so my, i'm supposed to be going off on summer camp on friday we'll ignore the weather right because last year we had a heat wave this year the weather's been a bit pants so it's looking to be a bit of a wet and wild camp that i'm gonna have this year but sod it i just want to get away um but two weeks ago i picked up the norovirus and like you'd expect that to just kind of disappear um i said two weeks ago actually it was a week and a half ago it was um to like you know 48 hours in your you're, you're, you should be better. But I ended up going to the doctor. I've ended up going the last week to the doctors three times and to A&E because I've just been so unwell. And I've lost four kilos in a week, in less than a week, which doesn't sound a massive amount, but it's that's still, a lot. that's 5% of that's my body lot. weight. In one week? In one week. In one week. That's, that's a lot. That's quite a lot. So I don't know where my fitness is because I've just done no work. Today, yesterday was the first day I actually felt normal, but I'm still not eating normally because I don't know what to risk. I can't eat that. And you may be like, okay, fine. People pick up bugs and stuff like that. Everybody can actually get a cold. But mine is every time I'm coming to a holiday at the moment, right? To the point where, and this is me being very open and honest, I'm now stressed about getting sick before I go on holiday, which is, sounds really, which makes you then feel more stressed. And I, and one of my doctors, I had a, a video call with another doctor in this week. So that, and that's not including the other three. And I said that like, this is ridiculous. I can't live my life where, um, I like about to go on holiday, but I can't because I'm physically too sick. Mm. Uh, it's madness, right? That's absolutely ludicrous for me to be able to do that. Like it's not sustainable. Right. And my job at the moment is very similar to what jerry's was like there are lots of things that i feel are out of my control and i'm not going to say that my job is stressful right because actually realistically it shouldn't it's it's probably not if you've got your head screwed on and i think it's it's me that's kind of like makes it stressful um and um uh kp and the sunshine gang as you <laughs> As you referred to it the other Such day. Bad, yeah. Right. She has read a book on this like mind and body connection and how in the last year I reckon that my cortisol levels, my stress hormone levels have probably just been through the roof for the whole year. And not because anything particular stressful has happened, but just the way that I mm. evidently hold myself. And it's and I said earlier when um when I said in, in the pod, about this in the podcast last year, everyone's going to be going, oh, Dom needs some help. And, and I said, I don't. And it's like, actually, no, this year I do. Like this year, I need to profess go to somebody professional and go, I need some help managing this because I can't function as an adult at the moment. Like work is feels like 100% of my effort because 
why am I stressed about it? Like, is it because I, if I don't mm. feel like I work hard enough, I'm going to lose my job? Is it because of yeah, money? Is it because of the way the world works? There's all these kinds of stresses, which then induces procrastination, which then induces, you know, things. And it's probably not wise to go on a podcast and admit that you procrastinate about work, but we all do, but because of stresses. And then it's like, it's the physical side of that. Then is that really impacting like the way that I can live? And then it, it knocks your self-confidence and then it's like, well, then I can't do anything else because I don't have time or the energy or whatever. And that's the one thing that I think is really, especially in the last like two months that I've, I found really important to me is to kind of go, do you know what? I need help. Somebody needs to teach me how to be an adult and how to be a successful ad- adult. And I mean that in a, in a right Nobody has taught me how to manage like the day-to-day stress and stuff's happened in this year, whether it's been the car crash that I had in October, that's taken a lot out of my time, whether that's um, changes that happened at work, whether that's just the general environment that, you know, I'm I'm a very empathetic, empathetic person. And it's for me to go, I can't keep doing that this time. This is hard. This is hard work, even though on the surface, it should be, this is just being an adult. And so that, to me, is actually the most important thing. And, you know, I want to be open and honest on this podcast as well, because as much as we've got these guests sort of saying to us about, like, here's what we do, you know, we're normal people. um, I think both myself and Jerry also deserve to tell our story. And, you know, I'm super proud of Jerry and his journey he's done over the years, because that's not easy to make a big career change you'll forgive me for saying jerry but you're a little bit older than me (laughs) well it's true yeah yeah and for me to kind of go actually i'm not in my early 20s and i've got this like full dating pool or this opportunities to uh like change my career anymore as as much as i did like 10 years ago but also like i've just been in survival mode and like at what point do I start to thrive as an adult you know I look at Jerry and you know I'm jealous it's like you know he's married he's got a house he's got dog you know he's got you know children and things like that which is well child in Jerry's case but um and I'm like I I can't envision that for myself in the current state that I am where it's like I don't have the self-confidence to go out there people go oh yeah just put yourself out there it's not it's not easy right Mm. and I've I've told my work colleagues that did it but I uh, sat in the in the office with them a couple of weeks ago, maybe about three or four weeks ago. And they annoyed me because they're like, just go and buy a house. It's like, it's not that simple. It doesn't just happen, right? It, <laughs> right? Just do this. And you're like, yeah. what you're saying is simple, but it's not easy. And that's that's yeah. the thing I've learned. Like, uh, there's a lot of simple things that are not easy. Um, and so, yeah, that's, uh, it's j- just, I think the the stress that I put on myself is something that I want to solve this year um, and potentially take it up as part of a journey through these podcasts and go, yep, which what's, what's my therapist said to me this month? Like what, Mm. what facts and stuff I'm pulling out. And, And what's crazy is I'm hoping that people have heard me enough on the podcast to go. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about on some of this stuff. I've done a lot of like research and I can literally, I can almost physically look at myself from a third person perspective and be like, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> like here are all the rules. Why are you breaking all of them? What is wrong with you? Right. And, and that then actually make to a certain extent makes it worse because then, you know, you, you, um, you feel guilty about doing the wrong things. And the final point, and just to kind of really emphasize it. So one of the things they always say to you is you need to forgive yourself, right? This is going to sound like a really dumb question. How do you forgive yourself? And I don't mean in the sense of like, you know, if I forgive somebody, you you can say, you know, I forgive you and that's all okay. But the actual feeling of you going, actually, no, I do like genuinely kind of just relax and go like, I, do you know, what? I'm okay with this person now. But to get that feeling about yourself is, I, I don't know how to do it. Like there's how to actually indict that feeling and go, actually, I genuinely do forgive myself. I, and and that's one of the lessons, like that's an example of some of me going, yeah, but it's all right. You're telling me to do X, Y, and Z, 
but how? Like, how do you actually do that? And that that was a really interesting point that I wanted to kind of make around, like, what's important now and um, and other things that you know, and and almost onto like the things I'd want to change. Like, if I could change, I would. That's what I'm going to work on. Anyway, I'm going to stop because I I realized that was about eight minutes of just me constantly no, no, talking. No, but no, no, it's good. It's it's. I think the how varies, doesn't it, by mm. person. So my my uh, advice on how wouldn't necessarily be compatible with a how that's going to work for you. Hmm. Yeah. And and it's it's tough, isn't it? Because hmm. so this is another one of those, um, and it's what I've learned from talking to other therapists and therapists in general is people have this idea that therapists will tell you the answers well they don't because the only person that has the answers is you they ask the right questions to lead you on the path to your own answers and don't get me wrong there are times where i'm like do you know what honestly i can't be asked with it i can't be asked to go through my own brain and figure out the damn answers again i, I can't be bothered just just but then you get to some really dangerous routes like just, just let me let, let me wallow away <laughs> just leave me alone but you can't leave yourself alone that's physically impossible unless you have some kind of real existential crisis type thing and i'm not quite at that stage yet so to speak but it's 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 recognizing that i have those thoughts and those feelings and going those are dangerous thoughts and feelings i need somebody to kind of go no i'm going to keep you on this track and keep pushing you along these rails because that's the support that you need Yeah, but do you need somebody pushing you? Like, I, I, I still think. I still think the only path through this is for you. You probably already have the answers, and you probably already know what you need to do. So it's just finding, getting to your, getting to a place where you feel strong enough, confident enough, and things are clear enough for you to to find a path out. Because hmm. again. I mean, everyone can give you advice, right? And then you can sort of go, you know, it could be the best advice in the world. And you can say, oh, actually, you know, that's 99% spot on, but there's always going to be that 1%. Mm. And you go, that's fine, but that's not quite taken into consideration. I think it's um, it's also a mixture of, like, the advi- like it, most of the stuff I need to do is simple, right? But it's also being held accountable. So, um KP and the Sunshine Gang, right, is really good at holding me almost accountable. Like she doesn't necessarily tell, sometimes she tells me like when I've got it wrong, she's like, no, think of it about this way, right? You need to change this thought process a little bit. And, you know, if I go and say, oh, I've done this and she'd be like, well, did you mean to do this? And, did you, you know, there's a little bit of like accountability, which is fine because, there's only so much that you can hold yourself accountable and, or until you've developed the techniques to hold yourself properly accountable. Um, and that to me is what you can kind of do as well from a professional standpoint, whether that's through um, therapy or, or, or other means, not that I know what other means are at the moment off the top of my head. It's, it's also holding you to accountable to say that you are going to do that. And that's almost what you, you know, what I need is someone to hold me accountable. When I say, I'm going to do this simple thing that I actually go and do the simple thing. Um, whereas I've got other people that just give you solutions and you're like, I don't need that solution. That solution is great, but it's not, it doesn't meet my empathetic needs and it doesn't meet my, uh, or emotional needs and actually makes me more frustrated because it's like, you make it sound easy. You don't make it sound simple. You make it sound easy. Mm. And then that doesn't make me feel good about myself because I can't do the easy things. It's a little bit backwards. Yeah. I, I mean, what helped me, I can only say what helped me was I prioritize, I did I prioritize kind of, I wrote out a list of the things that caused me stress. I did kind of prioritize it because then I listed out all the things that stressed me out. And and for each point that I I listed out on the page, I sort of rated it as like, well, how much does this stress me? 
mm. and then I and then I could prioritize based on that. And then I realized that that was why I came to the realization that if I'm not happy what I'm doing with what I'm doing at work, if I'm not happy job wise, that has the most impact. Even if it's even if it's not massively stressful, or even if not everything's going wrong with regards to my role. But because I spend so much time at work, the majority of my week is at work. Mm. Right? If you discount sleeping, I'm talking about the majority of my waking hours, I'm working. Yeah. So if something's not going right there, that has a that has a massive knock on effect. Mm. It has a massive impact on me. And and like you, I'm I'm very um I am a very I'm very sensitive and very attuned to what other people are also going through and I just thought, yeah, I can't do this. Mm. Um so, so I went into self preservation mode and that's why I made the change that I did. So I don't know if you've done it, which is to go through the things which you, you know, maybe going through a list and prioritizing that list. Mm. I mean, I've we've spoken about it before and, you know, we both agree. I think my biggest worry, right, is, um, is if I change something and I'm still unhappy. Oh, wow. And it's like, so it's, I called it like, Tom. yeah, it's that what if loop. Like, what if I've got, what if I have actually got the thing that caused, and it's, it's really interesting um, to kind of, like look at yourself again from a third person and and yeah. I, i've done it i've almost done it with like with friends you know such as you know kp and the sunshine gang or um um or laura or you know even yourself is you know i've almost gone well here's what i've done and i can like let's together let's look at myself as a third person like almost as an experiment let's jab in with a, a you know a cattle prod and stuff like that see what happens the and you know and I can recognize him going, well, look at the idiot there. He's doing like a what if loop and, um, you know, he's making no changes. Um, and it's interesting. And I don't think that we'll actually get to them today. But one, one of the topical events that I think was was that, you know, when I reflected on was the region beta paradox, when I reflected last year and I said, oh, no, I don't, you know, if this all sounds like Dom needs help, I don't. And I probably didn't at the time because it wasn't that bad. Whereas I think like because this year from a from an external perspective, from both the news, my health, the um, like the pressures I've put on myself, the changes that have happened in work, actually, it has gone into what we, you know what they call the the, the beta region beta paradox, which is basically you will only make a change when things get bad enough. Mm. And and the example that they that they use is um, like if you lived a mile away from work right? You'd probably walk it and it would take you, I don't know, let, let's say half an hour just for the sake of maths. But if you lived a mile and a half, you would cycle and it would probably take you 20 minutes. So you would actually be better off when things got worse because it's too, because it suddenly got worse enough that you wouldn't want to walk it. And then if you suddenly moved to five miles away, you would drive it. And that would seem worse, but you would make changes because things have got so much worse to do that. And I think that's what it is. Like the, for me, the world has just got even more worse than it was the last year. Certain things have happened this year in terms of my health and fitness and things that have just got so much worse. It's like, okay, I'm now at the stage where I was like, okay, you know, maybe I do need a little bit of support and help from that and, and to understand it and process it and go through it. Um, and and that you know that's the region beta paradox in terms of things. And um, it's the same. It's why people put up with, bad jobs but when jobs get awful that's when people leave hmm. because they get to a point where they go well it's bad but it just pays the bills and it still pays the bills and i can deal with it right but when it gets to the point that there are too many things that you kind of go hang on a minute i don't like this i need to jump off and right and and change that's that's where it is and that's what basically happens to you jerry you're like you, your job was stressful and bad and then some stuff happened and it's like okay this is awful i'm i'm done and get me off this wheel i'm i'm making that change and jumping off um the the merry yeah, it's interesting it, it was actually it, it wasn't a bad role it was actually a really good role mm. it was just the impact that that i i, I you know I, i'm gonna level with you i couldn't deal with it yeah. that that was the problem yeah, the challenges that that rolled through at me, I I just didn't want to. Not that I couldn't deal with it, I don't think I had the energy to deal with it anymore. I don't think there's any shame in going couldn't deal with it. I think it's one of those things where you just go, um, 
because you had responsibility for other people and you're going it's not fair on these other people for me to yeah to do that so for example for for, for for me so i took last minute i've taken next week off right so monday i'm not going to work <gasps> hallelujah which i think is i think is good uh obviously this comes out on the first of august so i would have been i'll be halfway through my holiday right for for two reasons one because i'd like actually i need i think i need a bit of a rest you know i've actually cancelled so much holiday this year that i've only taken i've worked it out i've taken four days off this year and we're now oh, coming really? up to august yeah yeah if, if you don't include sickness i've taken four days holiday this oh, year right. and obviously if you don't include the bank holidays so it was like actually i've got i've got holiday spare okay i'm taking this week off right it's a bit last minute um but I could probably have grinded through this coming week, but the thing I recognized is I'm not going to do a good job because I'm, hmm. there's no point me trying to do things. Like it's probably actually going to be more productive me not being there because on Friday I fired off a load of emails and said, look, this is all the tasks that I was doing and this is where everything. And, and some of them were, I need to have a conversation with that person. And instead of having a conversation with that person now, I've just fired an email and said, look, we were supposed to talk this week about X, Y, and Z, but actually here's what I need. Like, and maybe when I come back in two weeks' time, it'll be that they'll have actually actioned it. There might be a few things which I go, arse, I should have probably been there and that would have been a little bit easier. But you know, it, me not being there is probably going to be more productive than me mm. being there at like 2% battery life. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just yeah, a drag. I agree. So, yeah. But that was a long-winded way for me to sort of say, actually, I, there's a journey that I'm going on this year. And I'm kind of, it's interesting. The last question that we have on this is, are you in a better or worse place than last year? And actually, upon reflection, I'm probably in a better place than I was last year because I because it's got so bad, I'm recognizing that I need to make change, whereas I didn't make any change from last year. Like I was like, it's bad, but I can deal yeah, with it. Whereas true. now I'm that's going, true. do you know what, it's do you know what? Honestly, people, this is fucking shite, <laughs> right? I need to make some change. I need to do, like, make some progress. And there's going to be some things I get wrong and some things get right. And talking about them now and talking about, and this is where the openness and honesty, I think, helps me as a person, as well as I think it's just a good value, is I feel better about things talking about it. You don't normally get many blokes talking about these things. I think it's really important that we do actually talk these things. And people will judge me and will go that I'm weak or whatever. And fuck them, I don't give a shit about you. But the the other good thing is I like I'm sat here and I'm almost excited to kind of go on the journey and see where I get to. Like and then talk about it. And okay, I might based upon who we're having on the podcast and how things are gonna go, I might not get an opportunity to talk about it until I think it's now like like April next year, Jerry. <laughs> But based, you know, but that means that I could have made significant progress. Yeah, exactly. Or you could just mention little bits. Like you can, yeah. I think it's important to also celebrate some wins. Yeah. So even if it's just one thing per podcast, it's a bit like we used to do the just improve our mental. Yeah, as we used to do yeah. the bit of improve our mental health, and actually, Dom's journey is let's go to therapy and see if we can actually fix Dom and see what changes we can make in our life. Maybe I will eventually buy the house because I'll figure out actually it is simple and easy and I'll have, mm. I'll have the spoons to do it. I'll have the spoons to do it for those of you that know spoon theory. <laughs> so yeah, I don't feel down about talking about this. I think this is a really positive good. thing. Yeah, no, it's good. Dom, it's, it's, I'm glad you are talking about it and, and you know you're not alone. Mm. And that's and that's the awesome bit, right? I straight away yourself, um, KP and the Sunshine Gang, Laura, they've all I, by the way, that's one of my favourite nickname now forever, <laughs> honestly. You know it's Sunshine Band, don't you? Sunshine yes, Band, band. It's not gang. Oh, is it yeah. band? Band. 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 It did walk, walk I'm walking on sunshine. Did it do oh, did... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm gonna have to Google I'm walking on sunshine. Pretty sure that's Casey in the Sunshine Band. Walking on Sunshine. Oh God, uh, song. <laughs> no, that was it. Was Katrina and the Waves? Oh, that was Katrina and the Waves. But there is a band called Casey in the Sunshine Band, and they did Boogie Shoes. That's right. Casey. Okay. 
So obviously I've got KP in the Sunshine Band. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not going to come out. Shake your booty, get down tonight. That's the way I'm your boogeyman. Yeah, these are all classics. KC in the Sunshine Band. I love that. And this is why I love the podcast, because we've gone off at a complete tangent. <laughs> the time, there you go. After a really like poignant moment. <laughs> yeah, see? I love it. I love it. Um... Right, so the last two questions. Oh, no, we've got three. Oh, we've got three. We've got three, Jerry. Which is, if you, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Give me the confidence <laughs> to have not wasted the last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned about retirement. I just want to retire. Um, yeah. If I could change one thing about myself. I don't know, to be honest going to be brutally honest i can't i don't think i can answer this question what would i change i don't know i mean you've made a lot of changes to yourself this year anyway i've already done a lot yeah, yeah. how much more do you want me to do yeah i don't know i i think i've already made the change that i wanted to make which is i i managed to to, to get myself out of that what if loop mm. so what you said is really interesting i i i got out of the what if loop I just thought I stopped thinking about the what if and just went, just do it. And it's a risk. So you have to do it and then you have to assess. Was that the right thing? Yes or no? Yes, maybe. Yes, but there are elements of this that I can then take and learn for next time. Mm. Otherwise, you, 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 I I was in the what if loop for a very, very long time. Longer than I care to, to recall. Yeah. Or admit, or anything. Or admit, <laughs> but but and I, and I and I don't like talking about the age thing here because I don't think age really has got anything to do with anything. No. Really, no, no, no. That but um, but I think the reality is that as each year goes by, and the fact that I'm fifty now, I, I do sort of self reflect a bit more, and and maybe feel the urgency of things a bit more. Hmm. Because of my age, I sort of feel that, oh, oh, come on, you know, what What difference does it make? Just do it, see what happens, rather than a... I was, I was much more risk-averse, in, ironically, when I was in my 20s. Oh, yeah, like, tell me about it. <laughs> right, 20s and 30s. Well, yeah, because you kind of think, oh, well, I don't know why, actually, but I was more risk-averse. I, I, I'm so, I was so risk-averse in my 20s that I, don't, I haven't done anything. But that like, will change, though. But that will change. Yeah, and I, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, I did. I, if I could change with things, can I just retire? And and I, I don't. <laughs> I think I don't yeah. think that would solve any of my problems. I think it would just because my no, it's, it would it's create new thing. problems. Yeah, it, 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 you, you'd go whack a mole with it, so it would create new new problems. Yeah, and then you'd probably be hankering to get back to work again. Yeah, I think there's you know you've got the boredom mm. aspect and, yeah. and 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 you know the friendship and relationship stuff that that comes with work. Yeah. I think, um, you know, and I think, uh, I think there are bits that I might change about my working week going forward. You know, I think if if four day working weeks comes in, I'm I'm down. Don't give me. I'm so oh, down. Yeah. I'm so down. Um, because the amount of times, and I, but again, I, it's a stress thing. It's like, it, you know, at the moment, 100% of my effort goes into work and I've still got all the life stresses. Um, I hate the freaking fact that you, you're you like, some of the stuff I want to deal with and I get to the weekend, right, I'll deal with that. And you phone them up and they go, please phone us between 9 and 3 p.m. on Monday to Friday. And you're like, for flip's sake, when I'm I at know, work. Ridiculous. But I get it. I get it. And that's fine. I just need to make time to do that. Um, so, yeah. That's what I wrote in that one. Um, I, I've also put rediscover the ability to work hard was last year, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, and, and that's purely again, it's a, it's a stress related response is the way that mm. um, procrastination works. So it's interesting. It's really interesting. Um, what do you want to accomplish with the podcast in the next year? Ah, oh, guess, 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 isn't it? Get yeah, and I think I think we've already covered that. Yeah, get different people's viewpoints, do deeper dives on people's experiences, learn more about their lives. Yeah, I find that fascinating. 
Let's do it. I'm looking forward to that. And then I've already touched on this, but do you think you're in a better or worse place than last year and why? So it's interesting. You asked, I misinterpreted that question. And it's interesting where my head's at with it because I, I put, oh, I think we're in a worse place as in like the world's in a worse place. Oh, Not that I agree I'm in a worse place. Yeah, yeah. Am I in a worse place? No, no, I'm, I'm definitely in a better place. So I think the comment that I wrote is like, it makes no sense in the context of the question. No, um, it makes perfect sense, I think, actually. I think it's a fair point because I, I'm in a better place because things are worse, because I've reached that, you know, that, region beta paradox where it's like it's got so worse i'm like i've got to go and do something now i've got to do something yeah 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 yeah. i I, and and i think when i think there's nothing more frightening and nothing more worrying than than acknowledging that that there's shed loads of problems and it's almost like and this is what i mean about that you know i broke my what if thing so there there was a whole bunch of stuff that i kept thinking about over and over again it was almost like it was just bubbling away underneath but I didn't want to, just didn't really want to face into it. So, you know, you're going to keep feeling the pain and you're going to keep having to, to deal with the stress and stuff, but no one's going to come along and say, right, I see what the problem is. And, and so I'm going to solve this for you. <laughs> you've mm. got to, you've got to reach that point where you think, yeah, do you know what? Enough's enough. I always do it like on the balance of scales. Yeah. So, so for me, it's scales. It's, mm-hmm. So you can have you can have something which you think, yeah, I love this, and then over time, you have lots of little weights that just keep going on the other side of the scales until eventually the, it the balance tips, and then you go, yeah, yeah you know what, yeah. No. And the and the, and what happens is the balance tips slowly, the balance tips slowly. You do nothing about it. You do nothing yeah. about it. You do nothing about it until enough goes on, and it goes donk, and you go, hang on a minute, I need to fix that. That's and the that's, one. I'm at that point. Like, yeah, that's I'm the like, one. I need to fix that, and that's a really good analogy. It, actually, that. and and do you know what? It's it's good. You're absolutely right to say you're in a better place when you feel that right. That's it now, and I'm, and you're doing things, Dom. You're doing things mm. about it, which is oh yeah, 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 uh, and and. You know, hats off to, you know, like I said, I've spoke, speaking to a lot of professionals and still speaking to professionals and utilizing private healthcare and, and NHS healthcare, which have managed to get me an appointment within four weeks. Unbelievable oh, scenes, yeah, by the way. Incredible. Hats off to our NHS. So They're amazing. Next thing we need to do is we need to do a full Guy Fawkes so we can have a, no, <laughs> I'm joking. But um <laughs> Yeah, get, can we just have a general election and just have a bit of change? I think would do us some good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, we've talked for a long time. Like I said, now it's been in two hours forty-five. I think, um, and we've t- covered some tough topics. But I like I like the Vanity Fair because I think it it's a good opportunity for us to check in. And I'm glad that I I was thinking of putting a guest on this one, but I'm kind of glad that we kept it like separate. Uh, and got the opportunity to really say some of the thoughts, and for me especially to kind of talk about some of the things. That yeah, because the Vanity Fair is about us. Mm. It, uh, it's a very, very personal thing, isn't it? It's us. Yeah. It's we we started the the. Well, <laughs> this is you. It's all your fault. But no, it's your fault. You, you can't do uh, no, that. Okay. Right? You right. can't <laughs> say it's my fault. Right. So. I I must have told this story on the podcast, but I said to Jerry, right, I would love to do a podcast, right? And I've always wanted to do a podcast. And if I had a co-host, I'd love it to be you. And Jerry went, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. And then he messages me like four days later, right, I've just ordered a mic. When are we getting started? Yeah, nice. What the go. fringe? Yeah, because, I, and do you know, it's interesting since doing this podcast, I don't have the, <laughs> this is going to sound really funny. But I do mean it. It's I always wanted to do something creative. Mm. And so I was always, always wanting to I thought I've got to write a book or I've got to write I've got to do some art work or I've got to paint or I've got to do something. I haven't had that I haven't had that thought cross my mind since we started this podcast. No. And and, and actually that is, is a gen <laughs> that is a genuine human phenomenon that you should have a creative outlet yeah everybody yeah. everybody should have a creative outlet and and it's interesting because like before we started the podcast obviously i started the podcast and i did the my youtube channel about the same time and when this 
podcast really started kicking off, I realized I had no desire to do the, the YouTube channel. And I realized I just needed a creative outlet. I don't need nice. anything else. I don't need, I don't need to go do sketching or write a book or anything like yeah. that. This I'm, is our, my creative outlet yeah. and I love, and I love it. And I, I love the fact that we've kept it monthly because it's, it's enough to satisfy me, but then I get excited for the next one. Exactly. I, I think if we did this weekly, we would probably, we would, they'd be a lot shorter, but we would, you know, we'd have a, maybe a different attitude to it perhaps. I think the whole flavor of the podcast would change if we did it weekly. Mm. There'd be that pressure to sort of think about what, you know, I think, I, I love the fact that it's monthly because it, we talk about some really cool stuff and then you have time to let things marinate and you have time to start, you know, thinking yeah. about oh, the next one and oh, here's some funny things that we can do. Whereas I don't think a week gives you enough time to do that. P- productive. Um, it's called productive produ- procrastination. That's the one. procrastination yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. If you've got a project that's got no deadline, you can leave it and your mind will subconsciously think about it. Um, and okay, we have a bit of a deadline with some of these podcasts because we want to get them out monthly, but they're not, it's not such a pressured deadline where I think, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, even, even this one, okay, I only watched the podcast back yesterday, but that was still plenty of time because I was thinking about it. I was like thinking, what did I want to say based yeah. upon my health and, and bits and pieces? So I'd written some notes here and there, and then I went back and watched it and I was like, oh yeah, I've got all these notes. And like I said, the notes that I've got are probably... It's probably enough to fill a four-hour podcast. Like we've not even touched on some of the. No, stuff. I know. There's some other points as well that I thought. Right, I'm not going to go over. <laughs> I mean, there's some stuff I added and thought. No, I'm I'm not going down that rabbit hole. And, on and that's. Side. I think that's. You know, that I think that's okay. I think we're at that stage where this is our creative outlet, and I love it. Yeah, so, I love it. I think it's absolutely um, brilliant. So uh, we'll probably we'll round it off here. But Jerry, what are your final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts. Final thoughts are, um, actually, it's not final thoughts for me. It's probably more advice for people, I think, based on, and I think it's poignant based on everything we've been talking about. Uh, find that one thing that's your creative outlet. Take your take yourself away from the stress. Um, you know, that's, that's what I've done, and it's within your power to do. And I know it's not easy for, for everybody, but... If there's anything where you're kind of thinking, oh, should I, should I? You know what? If you're already at that point where you're like, oh, should I, should I? Yeah, just do it. Just do mm. it and see how it pans out. And if this, it doesn't this, work out, do something else. This podcast is like startup. Like this, the, the founding of this podcast is exactly a just do it moment. Because it, yeah, it was. Jerry was like, that's a good idea. Let me just buy that. And I was, and I had no choice but to just do it because Jerry was like, I was like, oh, okay, well, I better go and source this and source that and figure out this. And, you know, and I think we, you must have bought the stuff in about the April. And we did our first podcast for July. So we had about two months to put things together. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it meant, okay, right. I've got to do a little bit of research and, and figure stuff out. And what's what I love about the podcast is actually in the last year, we've obviously had a, I call it a design change. You know, I went and redid the logo and bits and pieces like that. And really happy with it, and that was a really that was a moment where I was like, I, I'm just want to and creative done, and it and it really worked. So yeah, creative outlet. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and I and I think that's that's kind of our takeaway from this kind of vanity fair. Hundred percent. And and look, final thoughts. Here's my final thought, but it's my final thought for you, Dom. Um, oh you're an amazing. You're an amazing human being. Honestly, you are. You are amazing. You really are. I I, I talk about you a lot to 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 uh to the missus to to friends um there, there aren't many you're a diamond there aren't many of you around uh <laughs> there aren't kind. many no seriously so so just what whatever whatever happens in in whatever your darkest moments just remember that you are such a good human being that that you know if if you don't hold on to anything else hold on to that Mm. And and and, and you, you know I way too kind. <laughs> no 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 no. It's, it's, it's not way too kind. It's but, a fact. So, but it's really nice to hear that because I know that in the last, especially in the last couple of weeks, when you feel when you feel sick as a as anything, and trust me, I've been in the, like the fetal position on my bathroom floor, going, oh, I just want to die. Um, you forget because you you think I don't deserve, you know, yeah. bits and pieces. Um, 
Uh, you know exactly how what I feel about you. So, thank you very much, Jerry. And I'm just, but I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna ruin it because I know that you'll be like, don't ruin it. Just, just carry on. Yeah, just, just take accept it, it and go. Just accept it, but just ah, just accept it. No, but it's true. <laughs> but it's true. Honestly, it's true. So just hold on to that, right? And you got, you got. We're all here for you. Yeah. So I think it's, just remember that. And and it's it's always vice versa. So yeah, of course. Um, thank you very much for watching, for listening, folks. Um. Like I said, we're coming up, we've got some we've got some guests now for the next six months. So um, we're going to have a lot of fun, some really interesting people to talk to. Um, and you'll still hear mine and Jerry's dulcet tones. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.